I've purchased a lot of video game consoles over the past year from places like DK Oldies, Timu, Goodwill, and GameStop. And in this video, we're going to go through my top 10 videos of the year and check out some of the best moments. So guys, sit back, relax, and let me know if you agree with my top 10. Number 10. I bought a refurbished Xbox 360 from Retro V Games, aka the knockoff DK Oldies. And uh, if you didn't see my last video, I'll explain later what exactly that means. But anyways, guys, these guys sent me probably the sketchiest box that's ever been shipped to me. Look at this. Laboratory box, biological substance, category B, UN3373. Let me just read to you what UN3373 means. So first sentence here says, Diagnostic specimens assigned to UN3373 are human or animal materials that are being transported only for the purpose of diagnostics or investigation. Like, why, why on earth would they send me this when I was supposed to be getting a 360? To me, I see two reasons for this. First of all, they just used the wrong box, which is be really weird to use a category B box on an Xbox. Like, why on earth would you do that? You just, like, that's a pretty bad option. But option two is a little bit worse, which is the fact that they maybe send me some human or animal parts, like, for investigation. And I don't know why they would do that unless maybe they saw my last video and they're mad at me uh, for exposing their drop shipping and um, non refurbished stuff. If you thought DK Oldies was bad, this is 10 times worse, 100 times worse. I don't know. They didn't even attempt to refurbish anything. At least DK Oldies wipes down the outside. But let me just show you the back here. Uh, we'll blur out part of the label, but you can see it's clearly from Retro V Games, has their address and everything, Allentown, Pennsylvania. But we're going to take this to the woods and film this like with a mask, uh, some gloves, some glasses. I don't have a hazmat suit, so I can't get that that in depth into it, but uh, we're taking a risk here. <laughs> I really hope it's an Xbox in here, but um, let's go find out. So we're kind of out in the wilderness now. I uh, don't want to unbox this in my office, so we're gonna be out in the middle of nowhere. I got my mask, got my gloves. Uh, I did have some eye protection, but I don't know where it is. So we're just gonna go ahead and open this box up and see what kind of human and animal parts are in it because I don't know why this is a biological box, but let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. All right, so I'm not really sure where I should start here. I guess, actually, I don't even know if I need a knife. I think this thing has perforations on it. Hopefully, cameraman is not in the line of fire. I'll take the L for the team. Let's open this slowly. Okay, we got... It. That's definitely just a controller. Okay. Is that a three? What is that? If that's a power brick, that's really light for a power brick. And that's definitely a three... Dude, that's a... Is that a 360 Slim? <laughs> that's a 360 Slim. <laughs> I didn't even order a Slim. First of all, where are the human remains? Human remains, animal remains, I don't see any there. Do you see any? I don't see no. Any. <laughs> There's still gonna be something in here. Like I'm not convinced that they didn't put some human or animal remains inside of the uh, Xbox itself, but we got a power brick here. And this thing feels super light, so it's probably, yeah, it's definitely a knockoff. That's nice. You can tell it's, you can tell a power supply is a knockoff because it's super light. Xbox 360 remotes. Is that actually OEM? I think it is OEM. Oh yeah, baby. Dang, they actually sent an OEM controller with an OEM battery pack. This thing actually legitimately looks like it has not been used. That thing looks pretty good. And then, yeah, they sent me a Slim, like, <laughs> which I, I guess is an upgrade. I did not even order a Slim. I ordered a, uh, I ordered an, a 360, just like the OG 360, 60 gigabyte, and here's a Slim. Now this thing is definitely not refurbished. It's very, uh, <laughs> very dusty. You can already tell, and it still has the warranty seal, still intact. Well, maybe actually, that looks like it might be, it might have been peeled up. Now we've got a bunch of dust down there. You can kind of see that down there. Just check what a, uh, what size hard drive they gave us. Oh no, they gave me a, they gave me a knockoff hard drive. Nice. You can tell because it doesn't say the uh, size right there. That's actually a pretty good knockoff though, because that looks very similar to the OEM. But I'm pretty, I'm like 99% sure it usually shows the uh, actual size there. And yeah, overall this console doesn't look too terrible. It does have some weird, what are those? Like what's going on there? I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it's got like weird, I don't know, water spots or water marks all over it. That's what? the animal remains. Yeah, it must be like, <laughs> I don't know guys. I'm still, uh, I guess we're kind of out of the clear for now because I don't see any animal remains or human remains here, but what, like why on earth would they put it in a box like this? What? <laughs> it just makes zero sense to me, no sense at all. It's like literally the last box I would think of putting a uh, console in. I, I don't know, man. I don't know what these guys are thinking. So we're back in the studio now, and guys, I'm just so confused what's going on here. So many weird nuances to this, uh, this order and this company. But let's go ahead and just take a closer look at everything they sent us. So first of all, here's the Xbox. I showed you a little bit outside, uh, but it's like, I don't know, it's it's pretty, uh, I don't know if they used a cleaning solution or something on here. It just made it look weird. And honestly, this right here might be the biological substance. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> what what is that? Why is it like splattered all over the front? It's just, it's just, that's just really weird and then here on the bottom even have somebody's fingerprints all over it like they're using clean solution and just like stuck their hands all over it so clearly this thing was not 
refurbished but just like the situation in general is so weird like why would they send it in that biological box that's super sketchy so unprofessional and like i get box recycling that's no problem that's fine with me but to put it in that box just like come on man and then the fact that they uh gave me a slim instead of a fat like i guess that's good it's an upgrade but like why why would they not just give me the fat one but i don't know uh, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see see if it works all right everything is plugged in let's go ahead and turn this console on so three two one we got life and <laughs> yeah this third party power supply so usually these third party power supplies have a fan inside of them so they're pretty loud this thing the same thing very loud and that's just like yeah i, I don't know i won't ramble about the uh, third party power supplies but, let's, but the console is booting up here let's go ahead and put some batteries in this controller and see if the controller works <laughs> dude first thing i noticed as soon as i'm putting the batteries in <laughs> they did not even reformat this console so this console was was it even tested probably not who is solid fiber 0828 and the controller doesn't work nice so they <laughs> here's a downside with with oem controllers from 360s so the controller itself is great the battery packs not so great the third party uh battery packs for 360s are actually better in my experience and last longer um the oem ones they're just like this little metal piece that gets bent right here and it's just like junk uh, let's shake it around a little bit see if it turns on there it goes all right turns on now and that's just like a common issue with 360s all right we are booted up now clearly on the metro dashboard let's go ahead and check which uh which version we're on i can't believe they didn't even reset this console just leaving people's people's stuff on here man come on uh 2.0.16767 so i don't know what date that is but it's fairly recent fairly recent in terms of 360s but let's go ahead and check out this guy's guy's profile yeah solid fiber 0828 let's go click on his profile here torrents no bio He's got a, what's, what is that, 650 gamer score. Yeah, let's check his achievements and see what games he's played, I guess. Uh, Guitar Hero 5, Madden NFL 13. Uh, when is, yeah, he's, don't say when they were last played. Hexic HD was last played in uh, April of 2014, so almost a whole decade ago. Connect Adventures, Motion Sports, Dance Central. Looks like a lot of Connect games, random PGA madden minecraft just like a fairly random mix of games it looks like a pretty basic avatar here like they didn't really do too much to it uh but the tray seems to work let's try that a few times make sure it opens and closes cool we're good to go there this this power supply <laughs> it's like double as loud as the console is in fact the console is not loud at all which is good to see let's try a 360 game first and oh i forgot i need to check the uh, hard drive size here and you can see a uh, hard drive 51.1 gigs free Nothing taken up, so yeah, 60 gigs. So it's, we got a 60 gig hard drive in here, and I'm like 99% sure there is no official OEM uh, 60 gig hard drive for the Slim 360. Now we also have the memory unit, which is the four gigs built in, and to me it looks like, yeah, it looks like the guy that had this console, like the original user, put all of his save data on the four gig hard drive, or the, the four gigs built in. He sold it to Retro V Games, Retro V Games took it and put a 60 gig hard drive into here, the knockoff hard drive, and uh, didn't even bother clear out this gamer's uh, stuff, but let's go ahead and boot up Dead Rising 2 and make sure it works. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned it, I paid 140 for this, so same kind of deal as like uh, Lukey Games, DK Oldies, they're all about 140 for Xbox 360. I guess in, in this case, at least they sent me a slim, which is good. The game's working, I'm really not gonna play the game, but it is working, it's reading. Let's go ahead and try out an OG Xbox game, because that's the one I'm a little concerned about. Uh, like I said earlier, I think the OEM hard drives are the only ones that work with with OG Xbox games, but we'll we'll check here. So I did boot up Halo for the OG Xbox, and it worked with no problem. I even came back here to the hard drive, and it does save the uh, the data the data here on the non OEM hard drive. So I guess what I read was wrong, or either that, or maybe it only applies to Fat 360 since Fat 360s don't even have the OEM four gigs built in. I don't know. Let me know down below if you know anything else about that. I really have not researched it at all. But something else I noticed is I think there's some more profiles on here. Ambient W and 006. Fresh Boy 05, Lanny, Rams. Yeah, so we got more people on here. Let's go ahead and sign into the internet and make sure the Wi Fi chip works. So I updated everything and I tried to sign in, and sure enough, it works. Uh, not on the default profile, but I signed into another guy's profile on here. Did not even have to put in my password or anything. And guys, this is, this is the problem with uh, this is the risk of leaving your profiles on an old console. Is somebody can, whoever gets in the future, can sign into your stuff. So now I'm literally signed into Xbox Live with Ambient One 006. Now I don't think he has much on here, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to you know, sign out and uh, format this console. But now let's go ahead and turn this console off, open it up and uh, see what the inside looks like. So let's go ahead and open this console up and we're still not out of the clear yet. There might be some biological substances inside of this console. I mean, you already saw there's some on the outside. Maybe that's why they put it in that box. I don't know, seems a bit sketchy, but let's go ahead and open up these side panels. And if you guys have ever taken a 360 Slim apart, it is uh, not an easy task. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> this is funny here. I just took off this grill. And you can straight up see 
like the grill lines of dust. That's actually hilarious. Got the other side grill off as well, and again, the same same dust pattern, just kind of funny to see. Now let's take off this next piece, which is uh, one of the more difficult pieces. So after like 10 minutes, I finally got these other two side pieces off, which is, uh, if you've ever done this before, not an easy task, um, especially on an un unopened console, but let's keep, let's keep going. I finally got this bottom piece off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal. And yeah, no dust there because that's really a enclosed space. Not easy to get dust down there. All right, guys, so we should be able to go ahead and take the, the top piece off. And whew, boy, I am excited for this one. Probably should put some gloves on, but I don't want to. Uh, let's see what comes out of here. All right, here's the, the face plate come off. Three, two, one. Let's go ahead and lift off the top piece here. Hopefully there's no fecal matter in here. Oh my, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, it's very, it's very dusty and dirty. Not as, not nearly as bad as like the desert PS3 or in fact, the other PS3 that uh, Retro Free Games sent me recently. Um, but the fan is probably the dustiest part. And actually it's not too bad. Uh, but clearly was not refurbished because if it was refurbished. It would have been opened up and cleaned. Even if they didn't open up and clean it, they could have gotten more dust out by just blowing air into it, which clearly they did not, did not even do that, which is awesome. Now, the one interesting thing to note here is that they didn't drop ship this one like they did the PS3, which is interesting. I guess they drop ship random consoles uh, and actually get the other consoles into their shop themselves. I don't know. But you know, overall, first glance at this thing, it doesn't look too bad. The board is pretty clean. The fan is dusty, but not nearly as bad as I thought it would be considering what the outside looked like. But let's keep keep going. And I want to take a look at the, what the, the thermal paste looks like because that's that's going to be our true test of if this console was refurbished. All right, motherboard is released. Bottom looks pretty normal. No surprise there. Let's go ahead and take this X clamp off. All right, got the X clamp off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal of the thermal paste here. Three, two, one. Dun, 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 dun. And yeah, it doesn't look too terrible. At least not nearly as bad as the Fat 360s, but uh, clearly has not been replaced. It's pretty dry. I get that that wipes off a whole lot easier than the 360 thermal paste on the Fat ones, which is nice to see. But yeah, guys, overall, a very weird console. First of all, I ordered a 360 Fat. They sent me a Slim, which is uh, better that than the other way around. Just weird. They also did not drop ship this console like they did the last PS3. They had the biohazard box, which still don't know why they did that because there don't appear to be any biohazards here except for, I guess the outside of the console was a bit sketchy, but honestly, they should have put the last PS3 they sent me into the biohazard box. <laughs> and yeah, just a weird situation overall. Not sure what this company is doing uh, and not sure why, why they're sending this kind of stuff out, but uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Number nine. In this video, we're going to be exploring the Xbox 360 marketplace one more time before it shuts down forever. So in case you didn't hear, Microsoft recently announced that they're going to shut down the Xbox 360 marketplace in May of 2023. Now, very quickly after that, they retracted that statement, deleted the article and said that wasn't true. Now, I'm not buying it. I think the 360 store is on its way out uh, pretty soon. Either way, I think somebody just hit that publish button a little too early. But in this video, we're going to explore the marketplace. We're going to explore the 360 dashboard just in general and kind of take a trip down memory lane. So I actually have my Jasper 360 here that I bought in 09. And as you can see, I already got the classic 09 game in here, Modern Warfare 2. I'm sure you guys played that a lot. I know I did with some friends. Got your classic avatar. We'll take a look at the avatar and uh, some games, movies, and TV. I don't think I have any, any movies and TV on here, but I got some games. So I'm just going to explore what games I have here. I don't think I have many downloaded. Just some like random... I played a lot of sports games back in the 09 days. So 303 NHL Arcade, that's a that's a throwback. Crash Cars 2, that was a fun game. Is that the biking game maybe? Uh, Injustice, I had a lot of demos also, by the way. Uh, demo, demo, demo. RC Air Sim does not even have a cover art photo. Wow, nice. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out, actually let's check out this avatar. So if you guys don't remember, you actually had avatars back in the 360 days and you could like customize them and stuff and <laughs> Apparently my message to everybody was PS4 is better. Uh, so yeah, the last time I updated that was probably 2013 when the PS4 came out and my tagline is big boy. Not sure why. And uh, what's my bio? Yeah, I don't have any bio. All right, let's go back. And I think there's somewhere here. Yeah, avatar store, there we go. All right, let's check out the avatar store. See if that's still active and see if I can buy any stuff from my avatar. I don't think I ever actually bought anything from my avatar. I just use a bunch of free stuff. All right, so here it is. We do have the avatar marketplace. And this is this is a throwback, man. We got Military Collection, Penny Arcade, MLG Collection, and Man of Steel. Oh, there's more. Guardians of the Galaxy, Halo, European Football, Gears of War 4. Wow, there's a lot of different themes here. Ninjas, Marvel, Doctor Who, Minecraft, Hot Wheels. I'm going to click on Hot Wheels, see what they got here. See if they got like a biker, a biker outfit. Oh, no, they just got straight up like a... Oh, that's sick. No way. I can get in my own car. 
still costs three bucks. I'm not going to pay for it, but that's just, that's pretty cool. Got a t-shirt, a greaser hoodie <laughs> for 99 cents, Hot Wheels driving suit. We got a Hot Wheels classic t-shirt. Cool stuff. This is super slow to load, but uh, not nearly as slow as the PS3, but it's still pretty slow. Cat collection. Horror store. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Let me check that out. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have, I have a hoverboard. I think I think I own that. I don't know where I got that from, but I, I bought a, I think I actually did pay for that. I think I bought a hoverboard at one point. I don't know why. I just thought it was cool. We've got, oh, a straight jacket prop. <laughs> Chainsaw, yes. I don't know. The Avatar store was different, man. That that was different. It was it was awesome though. Um, awards, gamer picture. Oh, I remember this. Oh, here we go. The classic. This is a trip down memory lane. Let's just go ahead. While we're here, I'm gonna change up my style a little bit. Let's dress up. I'm gonna go in the the classic all white. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna save and exit. <laughs> I'm surprised they even let you still do like Avatar stuff. That's that's a that's an absolute throwback. I haven't touched this since like the early 2010s or so. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check out the games in the marketplace now. Now, they are actually removing some games in the marketplace in like three days from when I'm making this video on uh, February 7th, I think. I don't remember off the top of my head which, which games, but we'll see if we can find them on here. So if we go to browse games, I'm assuming it'll take us to the marketplace. Now, this marketplace looks significantly different than I remember because I use it a lot in like the Blades dashboard days. And the NX, mostly the NXE days. The NXE were my prime 360 days. Uh, the Blades were actually before I got a 360, but I do remember, like, for years, I would I would look at the um, the marketplace on the internet for the 360 and kind of, like, dream about downloading demos. <laughs> Those are the good old days. Uh, and I think they had, like, a Blades marketplace kind of theme on the internet. Uh, that was pretty cool. But we got Arcade featured, On Demand. Let's take out the feature. And we got Themes, Gamer Picks, Search Games, Avatar Store. We already saw that my games add-ons free to play all right let's see what's free to play these days frozen free frost snowball snowball fight kind of a tongue twister happy wars world tanks air mech arena and defiance that's not very much we got some stuff castle crashers peggle 2 limbo let's check out most popular and see what pops up here minecraft no surprise there pinball x fx2 resident evil 2 resident evil revolutions 2 excuse me goat simulator classic uh, Life is Strange. I actually played that game like a long time ago. Remember absolutely nothing about it, but I played it for a few hours. Castle Crashers, Doritos Crash Course. I like vaguely remember this. This is a, I think this is another classic. Oh yeah, that is a classic. Is this still free? Oh, that's awesome. I think it was like a, it was like a course, kind of like, uh, one of those TV shows. I can't remember the name of it, but you like run through a course and pretty cool. Walking Dead, Assassin's Creed, Liberation HD, bunch of other stuff here. Trials Fusion. Those Trials games are actually pretty fun. Hydro Thunder, Battle Block Theater, <laughs> Plants vs. Zombies. Yeah, good stuff here. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2. Now, where is there a way I can just like see everything? I don't know. I don't know what, what does on demand mean? Let's try to just Call of Duty games, see what they got here. We got Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Advanced Warfare Ghosts, Black Ops 2. So yeah, they got everything here. Now, I'm curious what it costs. So Call of Duty 2, I guess, is the oldest one on 360. Probably still like 20 bucks. What do you know? 19.99. I was right on the money there. That's amazing. This one is probably 20 bucks as well. They're all gonna be 20 bucks. You can buy these games online, like the physical copy, for like seven bucks these days. So um, I would not recommend buying the the digital version. I mean, I guess you can if you want to spend 20 bucks and you don't want to go to the store or online. 30 bucks for Modern, Modern Warfare 3. Oh, that's a that's a rip, man. Black Ops 2. 50, bro. 50 bucks for Black Ops 2. What year is it? 2023? You can just tell they haven't touched the price of these games in years. 40 bucks for Ghosts. Whew, man. Like I said, all these games, for the most part, go under for under like 10 bucks on uh, on the internet. Just on eBay, whatever. Red Dead Redemption, I'm, I'm going to guess 20 bucks here. 30. Wow. Wow, man. Fallout 3. This better not be more than like 10. 15. Whew, man. All right, let's find Skate 3. This is a classic. I put so many in game, so many hours into this. I don't even know how to play. I don't know how to how to actually skate in real life. But skate two and three, I put so many hours into those games. They're so much fun. Twenty bucks. I, I still think that's a good price for that game. Just cause two, I also put a ton of hours into this demo. I don't know if you guys remember, but but let me know down below if you remember the Just Cause Two demo. I played 
hours and hours. I'd play the same thing over and over again before I it was. It was like a. I think it was before I was actually 17, so I can't even couldn't even buy the game unless I convinced like my mom to buy it for me or something, which was not gonna happen. What else we got here? Alan Wake, Left 4 Dead 2. I think Left 4 Dead 2 is one of the games that they're actually removing from the marketplace. I don't know why they picked that one, but they did. Uh, this is a classic as well. I played this a lot on the 360, and then I played it on the upgraded Xbox One version. I think 30 bucks. Come on, man. FIFA Street. Oh, classic. That's not even the real FIFA Street. The real FIFA Street is the OG FIFA Street on like the PS2 era, like in I don't know. 2004 maybe that was a fun game now gta 4 probably still 20 bucks 20 bucks what do you know man everything is at least 15 or 20 bucks on here which is kind of wild like they're they're still raking it in on here i'm sure people are still still paying for these games let me know the last time you bought a 360 digital game was um, i i guess there's still people out there and now i think the good thing with the 360s i'm pretty sure if you've already bought something you can download it later at least for the time being i'm sure one day they'll shut that down maybe you know a decade in the future but it's at least good to see that if you buy a game, you can re-download it at some point. For now, I'm sure. Like I said, I'm sure that'll change. But yeah, guys, so many games in here. Clearly, I can't go through all of them. This is just such a trip down memory lane. Top Trials. Oh, man. This is like this is like where I used to go was the Top Trials demos. Like, this is back in the day when I didn't have money to spare. I was just like, man, let me just play demos. And there were so many demos. Like, this is the perfect era for demos because you could download a demo for pretty much any game possible. Like, it, it was rare the games did not have a demo. So you could get a lot of gameplay in. Uh, is this, this, I don't even see a demo here, but you could get a lot of gameplay in with demos, which was, was awesome. Yeah, you don't see demos quite as much anymore. At least they're like, they're demos that are like half an hour and then they try to force you to buy and just not the move anymore. One more thing I want to do is I actually have a 360 still on the NXE dashboard. I want to plug that in. Let's go ahead and do that. So here we are on the NXE dashboard on this other 360 I have. And this is like a serious trip down memory lane for me because this is like the, uh, this is the first dashboard I used when I had a 360. I got mine in 09 and this is like the prime prime 360 now like i said you can't actually get on the marketplace here because we'll have to update but it's just cool seeing the old dashboard game marketplace video and music marketplace friends inside xbox events oh events those are that's a trip down memory lane they used to have like legit events contests and sweepstakes and stuff do you guys remember that that thing where it was kind of like what was it like it was like one of those game shows where you'd be like all your avatars would be in the same room and you'd play some sort of games or something i don't know that was awesome though it's one versus 100 i don't know who al is but i i think i got this 360 from goodwill like a long time ago and it had this guy named al his profile was on here he's a legend to me but we got skate saw modern warfare 2 saw is a pretty fun game still got some stuff downloaded a bunch of trials like i said 360 was the those are the days of demos and trials those are the best um video library wireless world we have some stuff on here Let's check it out. This dashboard is pretty fast too. I don't know. The, the NXC, like the blades are very nostalgic as well because I used to explore the blades like on video. I used to watch them. I used to see them online all the time. But like the NXC is when I really used it. And uh, this is just so nostalgic. This guy's got a bunch of uh, downloaded like trailers and stuff. E306 Fable 2 trailer. Nice. There's good stuff here, man. I wish I still had a blades dashboard 360 with me. I did for a while, but I gave it away. But yeah, man, this is a throwback. Let me know down below what your favorite dashboard is and when you're watching this this video, because I'm, I'm curious to know when you're watching this video. Uh, I'm making this video on February 3rd, 2023. So when you watch this video, let me know if the 360 store is actually shut down now. Maybe you're watching this in like 2033 and maybe you weren't even born when this video was made. That's going to be a serious trip for you and for me. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got a trip down memory lane and I'll see you next time. Number eight. I bought this PS5 Slim from Timu for about 30 bucks, and in this video, we're gonna take an in-depth look at whatever they sent us. So guys, look at this listing and tell me it does not look like what you think a PS5 Slim will probably look like. And I mean, they already made a GS4 Pro and a GS5, so of course the next logical step is a GS5 Slim. So let's go ahead and open it up. <laughs> All right, <laughs> here it is. Dude, this thing is already looking ultra sus. <laughs> we got the, the 2.4G wireless. I sure hope it connects to the internet if it's advertising that. And of course we have this controller here that looks just like a DualShock 5. We got the PS5 slim looking thing here with a USB port and a SD card reader, I guess, on it. 3D rocker, special game rocker for arcade, high sensitivity and anti-skid design. Here on the front, I mean, like that looks, that looks pretty sweet. Like honestly, if the PS5 slim looks like this, I'll be happy, maybe. I, we'll, we'll see what it looks like on the inside of this thing. But uh, hold on, I forgot about the product features on the back. It says double handheld. What, what does that even mean? Does that mean Okay, maybe they're talking about, maybe the handheld meets controller and there's two controllers. That's my guess. Uh, support 10 simulators, open source system, and dual players. 
It's a lot of dual stuff here. I don't know. The last one I bought, I think said four. Yeah, this one says 4K as well. So apparently they're putting out a 4K Ultra HD stick. I don't know what that means. And just for comparison's sake, we got the GS4 Pro here, the GS5 here, and of course the GS5 Slim, as I'm going to call it, but they call it the 2.4G wireless. And it is indeed slim because it's a, the box is a whole lot smaller. Um, let's go ahead and open the box up. All right, guys, time for the big reveal. Dude, wait. <laughs> Hold on, where's the con where's the console? <laughs> we got a controller here. Oh wow, that feels like absolute junk. Wow, it's like this thing is super light too. We got the, the other controller here. Wait, where is the is <laughs> hold on, hold on. Is this the no it can't be. GameStick Pro? Hold on. <laughs> the photo they show me, look at this here. Look, look how large that looks here. <laughs> Dude. They made this thing seem like it was twice as big, three times as big as a controller. But in reality, this thing is about half the size of the controller. <laughs> what a what a what a dupe here! What a bait and switch. There was a little baggie off to the side. We got a, a little. Well, hold on. <laughs> what kind of HDMI cord is this? Why do we have a female to male HDMI cord? What is this thing? GameStick Pro. <laughs> Dude, it's just an it's just an HDMI stick. Are you kidding me? It does actually look like a. PS5 design though, like if you look at it, like the, the contours and stuff of it looks like the PS5 a bit. Uh, <laughs> what is going on here, man? I mean, I guess it's kind of nice to give you this little extension thing so you can just hang it from the side of your TV. <laughs> Dude, wow, this is uh, not quite what I was expecting. And it doesn't, it doesn't even have built-in uh, wireless support for the controller. You actually have to plug in your USB here, I guess, to get controller controller support. What? And it, wow, and that's a tight fit. Oh, holy crap. That is the tightest USB port I have ever seen in my entire life. I, I just like, I can't even. <laughs> okay, so looking back at this listing, if you scroll far enough in the pictures, you do find a part that shows it as an HDMI stick. But like, if I, all, honestly, all I did was look at the first picture and it's like, I gotta have that. And it, it, you know, it, just like, it was just like the front of this box where it clearly looks like a uh, PS5. It looks like a larger console than an HDMI stick. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at these things in here. So we got our, hold on. <laughs> this is, dude, what, what a mess. A, B, X, Y. They couldn't even bother putting the, the, the PlayStation controls on here. We got start select mode. You got this fake touchpad that does nothing. You've got the uh, the DualShock 4. Um, wait, this is not DualShock. 4. This is like this is like PS2 era. This is a DualShock 2 and DualShock 3 uh, level of analog sticks. There, they actually feel decent for what this thing is. Uh, the D-pad is of course awful. The triggers are like the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. And then you even need batteries. Wow. And you, you got an on-off switch on the or on the on the controller. Wait, wait, does this even work, dude? The on-off switch is so janky that there's like not even, you can't even feel the click when you switch the on off. Wait, there it is. Okay, you just gotta press super hard. There it is, okay. No wonder this thing was, I mean 30 bucks is honestly too much for this, but of course we have two of these and I just like can't get over this as A, B, X, Y. Now looking at this GameStick Pro thing, it is a, it's a very interesting looking device. Of course, got your HDMI port there. You've got an SD card in here. Let's see if I can even eject it. All right, this thing has 64 gigs on it. I'm assuming this is basically a Famiclone, so it's gonna have a bunch of like, old uh, NES type games on here. We got a, a micro USB port, of course, our USB A port where we just plugged in our adapter. And yeah, I mean, like you can see, it has the contours kind of like a PS5. Uh, so that's kind of cool, uh, but it's just uh, kind of lame how small it is. We'll, we'll open this up later, but let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does. Sorry guys, one more thing. I wanted to compare the PS5 to the GS5 to the GS5 Slim and <laughs> just like, this is pretty self-explanatory. Look at the size difference here. Like, oh my goodness. This thing, I already, I actually really like this thing because it's kind of cute. It's pretty small. This thing is like triple the size of this new GS5 Slim HD stick, game stick pro thing. I, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Let's plug it in though. Wait a second. <laughs> Dude, the buttons are flipped around. It says, it says on and off. When you turn it off, it turns on. When you turn it on, it turns off. Wow, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Like, look at this, the light is on and it's off. And when I scroll through, it's actually working. And just by the way, this, uh, this home screen actually looks pretty nice. Like this is a nice UI. We got Arcade Classics, Final Burn, Neo, May. Oh, we got MAME games on here. Nice. Atari 2600, uh, Lynx, bunch of, yeah. They just call it, inter <laughs> I love how they just leave off Nintendo here. They just call it Entertainment System. Uh, they call it Game Boy, Super Famicom, uh, Super, Ni oh, they call it Super Nintendo here though. So they should just call it Super Entertainment System, right? Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Genesis. Dude, they got every, this is actually not PlayStation. Oh, are we emulating PlayStation games on here? Nice. Let's just, uh, let's start out with some, some MAME. Let's play some arcade games here. But it is, it is the, <laughs> it's the classic here where they just have like random numbers and it's in a random order. I, why do they always do this? Why can't they just put them in alphabetical order for once? Big River Fighting Blood Tolerance. 
That ca that can't be the name of this game. And it, no, no, that can't be the name. Let's go ahead and try. I'm gonna try with Game Boy. Uh, we got Rockman, Galaxy Warrior. Now the question is, are the games on here? Are they North American? Are they Japanese? Chinese? I don't know what all the regions were for like the Game Boy and that sort of thing. There you go, Toy Story. That's the kind of game I played when I was when I had a Game Boy Color. I was like five years old. So let's go ahead and see this. See if this is actually Toy Story. It feels so wrong that I can't click these sticks. Like a lot of times when I'm just waiting for games, I'll click the sticks just because why not? Um, but I can't do it here. And that, yeah, it looks like Toy Story. Wait, this is actually really interesting. They have a they have a border around the outside, which is a bit annoying because I cut off a lot of screen real estate. But it looks like they customized the border to Toy Story. I, I don't know. That's that's pretty interesting. But it's it's definitely working here. I'm curious what this mode button does. I haven't tried that out yet. Oh, we can resume saves. Oh, you can save your state. Hey, that's pretty fancy. <laughs> Frog crossing. The <laughs> There's no way they just call it Frogger, Frog crossing the street. All right, we gotta boot this one up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure enough, it's Frogger. I, I thought for a second maybe I just maybe they actually made a knockoff Frogger called Frog crossing the street, but no, it's just called Frogger, and they decided to call it Frog crossing the street. So like, I, I, I was talking about this with these Fama clones. I don't understand what like what goes into these things. Like clearly, some of these they're calling them the legit names like Super Tennis, Tec <laughs> Tecmo Whooper Bowl. What? And then it says Mega Man Sock. This is what doesn't make sense. Like they just put random names in some games and other games have the real names. Super, how did I know this before? Super Moo Yoshi Island. They don't even have Super Mar, they don't even have the, the classic Super Mario World. Super, <laughs> they call it Donkey Kong Land 2, Super King Kong 2. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Car God 3, that can't be the name of that game. <laughs> Instead of Rayman, they call it Layman. <laughs> Dude, this has got to be some kind of AI thing where they're like, the AI is scanning the image and like making up a name for it. That, that's got to be it. Like, like I can't with these names. Like, dude, imagine your, imagine your job is to sit here and scroll through these games and make up names for them or try to translate them. And this is what you come up with. <laughs> Just funny stuff. Now, like, is, is this legal to sell these games? Like, no. Now, I do want to try out the PlayStation, see if they actually have some PS1 games on here. Hey, they got the Silent Hill Japanese, at least they specify it's the Japanese version. That's cool. I guess, yeah, here's the Silent Hill, I guess, the US version. I don't know, let's boot it up and see if it can actually emulate PS1 games. All right, guys, so I feel like I'm dropping a ton of frames here. To be fair, I've never actually played this game on a physical PS1, so I don't know how it runs, like on the OG. But I, had, I did emulate it on the Steam Deck, like, a year ago and I feel like it ran better than this. So I just noticed down here below all games, it'll tell you how many games you have. You have 20,089 games. So if that's like legit, that's a lot of games in here. Now I'm sure there's a lot of repeats. There's probably more like 10,000 games because we saw some repeats there. Wait, no, they call them Super Mario R. That's like Jacob R. That's awesome. We got Super, Mush Super Mushroom Man R. What? The disappearance of the, of the Mushroom Man. Super Mushroom the two bro. Super Mushroom Cry Rabbit Hunt. No, don't tell me this is Duck Hunt. Okay, no, it's not Duck Hunt. Okay, okay. <laughs> but up here we got actually Super Mario Bros. So maybe, maybe there is, like, guys, let me know down below. Maybe there is another version, like a modded version of Super Mario Bros. that was called Super Mushroom Man. Maybe I just, I'm just clueless about that kind of stuff. But Super Mario 14, like, I don't know. The things they include on here are just like, it's, it's, it's just so much fun to just scroll through here and see the, the ridiculous things I find. Sue, he's fighting big goals. We even got Transformers here. Hot Dog Storm. No, we gotta play this. What is this? No, no way. There's actually a game called Hot Dog Storm. What? Where, where are the hot dogs? What a first level. Jeez. All right, well, I think we've explored this ridiculous thing enough. Let's go ahead and actually tear it down and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so first I'm actually gonna open up this controller here and see what the insides look like, because this thing is this thing is incredibly light. Like, it's gotta be probably a fourth of the, oh yeah, there it is. All right, so we already lost a couple springs. Oh wait, no, I didn't. Oh, okay, those are for, those are for the, the batteries, wow. We got one circuit board here and another one right there. Uh, so yeah, you can tell why it's very light and clearly there's no vibration motors in there, which saves you a lot of weight. And uh, yeah, extremely basic, uh, just a, uh, you know, a basic circuit board for a controller. I mean, it, it does work. It doesn't feel nice, but it does indeed work. Now let's go ahead and try to open up this GameStick Pro. I'm gonna have to pry it apart somehow because I don't, there's like no screws anywhere. Uh, so let's, let's give this a try. All right, there we go. Wow, I'm actually impressed. They uh, really utilize the space here, which I like. I mean, if you take a look at the inside of the GS5, which I'll show a clip here, uh, they basically have like one or two little circuit boards and then the rest of it is just open plastic. This one, they legitimately used the entire space here. Let's see if I can pull this circuit board out. And yeah, I mean, you got your rock chip. And uh, of course, yeah, like I just I just like how they actually utilize the entire space. That is that is pretty cool to see. But hey man, overall for 30 bucks, like this is actually not bad. I am a bit disappointed it's not bigger. Uh, but technically it is smaller than the GS5, so it is it is a GS5 Slim, like indeed. But let me know down below what you guys think about this thing. Overall, again, for 30 bucks, 
not too bad. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Number seven. Hi guys, Danny the editor here. I needed you guys to see this. I'm definitely getting fired for uploading this video. Jacob doesn't know that I uploaded this version of the video that I secretly edited to expose him, but I just needed you guys to know what's been really happening here at Jacob Bar Studios. It truly is shocking. You have to see it for yourself. I bought a refurbished PS3 and Xbox 360 from DK Oldies for over $500, and in this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at both of them and see if they actually refurbished anything this time. So we'll start with the PS3 first, and then we'll move on to the 360, and this is supposed to be a backwards compatible 80 gig model of the PS3. Uh, we'll see if it is, and hopefully we got an OEM controller this time. You know, last time I bought a PS3 from DK Oldies, they sent me a third-party controller that doesn't actually work on PS2 games. All right, so we got plenty of packaging here, and we've got some more packaging here. And then, oh no, we have a keychain. No way, dude. Kid cast. <laughs> what is this? Crappy? Dude, they, it's actually all bubble wrapped up in here. This is a little bit skeptical. Why does the packaging actually look decent? Let's go ahead and pull this out and see what's in here. All right, so we should have the PS3 here, uh, cords right there. We got a controller here, which is bubbled up nice and tight. Let's go ahead and open this up and see if it's a third party. Oh, crap. Wait, they sent me an OEM controller? That's a little odd. I've never seen them actually send an OEM controller. If I can get it out of here. That's really odd and it's actually in decent condition. Hmm. Cords, let's take a look at these and see if they even send me the right cords here. We've got, okay, USB cable. We got a power cable and a, an HDMI cable. Okay, cool. And then we got the, the uh, console here. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right, so we got the console here and that actually looks not too bad. Okay, that's, and there's no, uh, there's, there's not even a warranty sticker there. There's no warranty sticker and the console looks decent. It is, let's see if it's, yeah, it is a CECH EO1, so it is backwards compatible. It is a little bit sketchy. I've never seen DK Oldies actually send what they're supposed to here. Um, this does not fit my narrative. Let's uh, let's cut this part out. Um, I'm gonna have to redo this and pack it back up. And uh, yeah, we'll have to fix this. This is this is not gonna work for this this video. Uh, let's just forget the HDMI cable. Just act like they didn't send me that. Oh yeah, that'll do. Let me give it one last final touch here. All right, take two of this PS3 unboxing, but let's frame it as take one. So let's start with the PS3 here. It's supposed to be an 80 gigabyte uh, backwards compatible model. All right, and wow, <laughs> this is their packaging. <laughs> got a power cord. We got a power cord and a uh, USB cable laying on top with a piece of bubble wrap underneath. Yeah, that makes sense. We've got, wh dude, what is <laughs> ramen noodle soup? They even bubble wrap. Okay, I'm gonna have to look, check their TikTok channel, see if they filmed that. Got a controller here, of course, no tape on it. Um, double Shock 3. Dude, they sent me another Double Shock 3. I mean, really, like, they didn't learn from my last video that the PS3 backwards compatible, like, a PS2 can't, you, you can't play PS2 games on a backwards compatible PS3 with a dual, Double Shock 3. Come on, man. Um, we got a rant. Dude, no, no. What is. I got a half-eaten Slim Jim. Okay, um, and of course the console has basically no bubble wrap. Toss that to the side. We've got our console here, and it, of course, looks like junk. You got fingerprints all over it. You've got uh, scratches all over it. It's supposed to be a, a cosmetically flawed one, but uh, cosmetically flawed doesn't mean you destroy the outside. But, uh, okay, X marks the spot. All right, yes, yeah, so here's the console, and... Oh, crap. Let's put this DK Woody sticker on it. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so here's the console, and of course, dude, did they use Magic Eraser on this? No way. Come, come on, man. Like, it's got Magic Eraser all over it. Like, they, and they went halfway with the Magic Eraser. They didn't even go full, full GameStop. They went halfway with the Magic Eraser. If I can flip this bad boy around, yeah, we got CECH E01. So it should be an 80 gig model. And of course, like you saw, the bottom looks like junk. It's supposed to be in good condition, but it's not, of course. Oh, here we go. Got that classic DK Oldies warranty sticker. And oh, it's actually clean in there. We'll have to, we'll have to fix that. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and plug this console in, see if it works. It probably won't. So I have the console plugged in, and of course, I noticed they forgot to give me an HDMI cable. Um, not a big deal, but you know, it's just always something. Let's go ahead and turn it on. We do have power. Okay, let's turn it on. Any free games? Nope, no free games. <laughs> let's go ahead and connect up our Double Shock 3. All right, so we're booted up to the home menu. Uh, let's go ahead and check out a game, see if it works. We're going to start with a PS3 game. We got Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, a classic. All right, so I've been playing for a little bit. Uh, the game's working fine. The disk drive is a little, sounding a little bit weird, um, and it's blowing out. Blowing out some air, not that hot, so the thermal paste probably hasn't been replaced, is my guess. Um, you know, but it is working, so I'll give them credit for that. Yeah, in reality, this the disk drive is fine, and it's, it actually is blowing out hot air, but... 
Um, yeah, I don't want to push that narrative. So cut that part out and we'll hope the thermal paste actually wasn't replaced. All right, so let's try out, try out a PS2 game now and make sure that works. All right, so the PS2 game is loading up and working, but of course, this third-party controller is not working. Uh, if you guys don't know, third-party controllers just don't work on PS2 games on a backwards compatible PS3. Uh, it's just, a, it's basically locked out by Sony. Um, so, you know, if they're sending out PS3s with that are backwards compatible, or as they call it, reverse compatible, they should be sending out OEM controllers because this literally will not work on a PS2 game and it's supposed to be compatible. So, um, yeah, and I can't even control anything now. So let's go ahead and restart this, but the PS2 game is working. Um, we're going to restart the console and we'll try to PS1 game as well. All right, so we're playing the second PS1 game. It's working just fine. Now the controller, you know, it sucks, but it is a controller. It does at least work on PS1 games. Console's working mostly. Um, the fans are ramping up. This drive sounds kind of weird, but let's go ahead and, and turn this console off, open it up, and hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully it's not dirty inside because I'm getting a little bit of a musty smell in here. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So let's go ahead and open this PS3 console up. And first things first, we got to peel off this classic uh, warranty sticker leaves behind that nice that nice residue then we take this piece off right here all right so let's reveal this first cover here pull it off oh it looks cleaner than i expected um okay uh let's go down to the next layer and see if there's any dust there so i have all the screws out in this top piece let's go ahead and do the big reveal and see what it looks like last time i opened one of these up it did not look good and oh that's like actually clean can't find any dust okay this is this is not gonna do. We need to cut this part out. We need to redo this. Um, this could definitely gonna be better for the video if I add some dust. How can I do this? Can I add some dust? Cut this part out. Let's um, let's redo this part. All right, guys. So let's do the big reveal. I just took the uh, the outer screw off, and let's take this top plate off and see what. Is this dirt, dude? Uh, DK Woody's is taking this to the next. <laughs> This is to the next level, man. They put dirt and mulch in here. Okay, and I already took these other screws out. Let's go ahead and take this top off and see what's in here. We've got... Dude, what on earth did they do here? Dude, they're doing this on purpose now. Like, they saw my order and they put this in here. We got we got dirt. We got pine straw. We got presumably dog hair, which I did not put in here myself. Um, this is totally... I mean, this is like Slim Jim. And like I said, guys, I didn't do this, but let me just put myself in a DK Audi's employee's head. If, if they saw an order come from me and they want to they wanna get the free publicity on, on my YouTube channel, they make the console even dirtier. Oh, they put dirt and pine straw, Slim Jim. Okay, so I, I see where they're going with this, um, but no wonder it's getting hot in there. No wonder it's putting out so much heat. Uh, we've got a freaking Slim Jim in here that's half eaten. We've got dirt and... I mean, like, where did this come from? Like, somebody go outside and scoop up some dirt into a plastic bag and then dump it in here? Did somebody grab some pine straw out from next to the dumpster and then put it in here? Did somebody grab some dog hair from their car and then put it in here? I mean, what is going on here? Uh, what is... <laughs> These guys have taken this to the next level. I don't know what to, I don't, I don't know what to say. This is ridiculous. All right, guys. Well, it's not looking good, <laughs> um, to, to say the least. But let's keep going. I want to see what the thermal paste looks like. I'm hoping they at least replace the thermal paste for me. Um, probably not, but we'll we'll see. Let's go ahead and take off some more screws, and we'll get down to the next level. Oh, and we've got a little visitor down here, crawling around. Thank you, DK Oldies. All right, let's do another reveal here. And okay, it's well. Um, okay, actually clean. All right, this, again, this will not do. Let's let's fix this real quick. Uh, can please cut this out, Mr. Editor. All right, so I got all these screws off now. Let's go ahead and do a big reveal of the bottom where it's usually like a desert. So uh, flashback to the last PS3, the desert showed up, up on the screen. But let's go ahead and look at this one. And we get, <laughs> I guess they warned me. They gave me a pack of ramen noodles in the box and they smashed up some in here. It's basically like a desert, but a desert of ramen noodles. I mean, come on guys, somebody is out to get me. Who Who is doing this? Last but not least, let's check out this thermal paste. I mean. What are the chances they, they replace the thermal paste? All right, so let's do the big reveal on the thermal paste here. And three, two, one. Here we go. And, oh, wait a second. Did they actually replace the thermal paste? There's no way. There's no way they actually refurbished this. Um, all right, what do I do here? Okay, let's let's cut this part out. I got to redo this. Um, yeah, cut this out, please. All right, so I got everything else off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal of the thermal paste. Three, two, one. Let's pull it off. And... Oh yeah, <laughs> dude, it looks like they literally came in here and wiped off the thermal paste. I don't know if that's what they did, but there's literally no thermal paste. Let me, I'll show you guys some B-roll of this. Like this is just, this is so bad. No wonder I was getting no heat out of that. Like 
what on earth? This might be the worst thermal paste job I've ever seen in my life. All right, so they definitely did not refurbish this console. They uh, left me dirt, dust, hair, ramen noodles, gave me a half-eaten Slim Jim in the package, like a third-party controller. I paid 400 and something bucks for this. Like, I, I, I don't get it. Like, like, why? Now, let's move on to the 360 console. And it's supposed to be a 20 gigabyte console with a controller, of course, power supply, all that good stuff. They didn't specify which 360 they're going to send. So, uh, hopefully, they send like a Jasper or a Falcon instead of, you know, that crappy, uh, crappy Xenon. But we'll see. All right. So, we got this open now. Let's see what's in here. We got some packaging. Cool. And, dude, another, another keychain? How am I getting this? Did they film this order? I'm getting lucky here. Trout. Kid casters, what? What is this? Okay, cool. We got a controller, or no, that's power supply, probably, maybe. Uh, we got a controller here. Hopefully it's OEM, probably not. We got a power supply there. We've also got our console down here. Let's go ahead and take them out and take a look at them. All right, let's uh, take a look at this controller. Probably a third part. Dude, what? They sent me an OEM? That's not OEM, no, that's, that's third, no, that's. Dude, they actually sent me like a special edition controller. Let's take a look at these cords. Um, I'm assuming in these cords, they probably sent me like a, an HDMI or a AV cable. Yep. Okay. So they sent me an AV cable. That means that ugh, they probably sent me either they, yeah, they probably sent me a non HDMI console. Classic. Um, we got our part of our power cord there. We've got our power brick here and oh, they sent me an OEM power brick. Huh? That's surprising there. And then we've got our console here and of course, yeah, it's a Xenon, but it actually looks pretty good. That's, that's odd, it looks decent. Um, hmm. Did they actually clean this thing? This is, again, this is not fitting my narrative right now. Um, I might have to fix this, okay. Uh, yeah, cut this part out again, please, Mr. Editor. Um, we gotta fix this, this is not gonna do for this video. Okay, perfect, let's pack in this uh, crappy third party controller, it's a little bit dusty. Uh, let's just conveniently omit the AV cable. I'm gonna repackage this. Again, cut this out, please. So let's go ahead and open up this Xbox 360 now. And first we're gonna do a the classic, oh, uh, I don't know what's going on in there. Let's see what's in here. Should be a 360, a 20 gigabyte 360 controller, all that good stuff. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so opening it up, we got <laughs> the classic uh, one piece of packaging. We got, dude, <laughs> what on earth is this? <laughs> First of all, we got another Slim Jim. At least they didn't eat this one. Joey included a picture of himself in there. That is, that's wild. I mean, I guess, thank you. I'll hang that on my wall. Uh, we've also got a useless piece of packaging right there. We've got our power port cord. Appears to be third party, good stuff. Gotta love the third party power bricks. So my console can blow up. We've also got a controller down here, partially wrapped up and it's, uh, yeah, it's third party. And the thing I hate about these third party controllers is they look very close to OEM. So I think like 90% of the people that get these controllers probably probably think they're OEM because it looks very similar. And of course, last but not least, we got this console here and oh, hold up, hold up. What is that? Oh, nice. This time they gave me some ramen and oh, they prepared it for me already. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, DK Oldies. You already prepared my ramen for me, an extra 50 cents to throw that in there. Even got a, a self-portrait of Joey. I appreciate that. Um, now we have the console here, and this console, yeah, it looks solid um, on the outside. Comment here on the back, of course. Classic DK. We got the Xenon motherboard. So if you don't know, there's a there's a handful of motherboards for the 360. The very first ones were called Xenons. They had only an AV port, no HDMI port, and the Xenon motherboard is most prone to rendering a death. So these are the consoles you don't want in the state and age, unless it has like an old dashboard like NXC or, or Blades. But of course, that's what they sent me, and I paid a premium for it too. And guess what? There's not even an AV cable, HDMI cable, nothing. Just a freaking Slim Jim. Well, let's go ahead and plug this in and see if it even works. All right, so I got the console plugged in, had to source my own AV cable since they didn't send one. Uh, let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works. We got a green light so far, and pretty much immediately I can smell the third party power supply. It just has like a factory like plastic burning smell or something. Like I, I don't recommend, um, I, mean, I mean, there's some third party power supplies you can use for 360 that, that I mean, they work, but they're not great. Uh, but let's go ahead and connect up to this console. And here we are on the Metro dashboard. You know, it would have been a redeeming factor if we had uh, been on the Blades or NXC. Uh, Luki Games actually sent me a console recently that was on the NXC. Lots of other stuff was wrong with that, but it wasn't the NXC. Let's see what kind of games are already played here. We got player one. Come on, stop doing Xbox Live. I don't care about Xbox Live. I just want to see this guy's profile right here. We've got Split Second, Call of Duty Black Ops, Big Bumpin', The Lego Movie. Nice. 
Uh, well, let's go ahead and s open up this disk drive, make sure it works, and uh, play a game. So I was really hoping this disk drive wouldn't work. Um, I could take the rubber band down, but no, I'll give it to him this time. I'll let them, I'll let them have a good, a good disk drive here. All right, so the disk drive works. Let's go ahead and put a game in. We got Prey right here. Okay, so the other bad news with the cheap power supply is when you hear a fan coming from the cheap from the power supply. Uh, this one you can you can hear a very loud fan inside of it. The OEM ones don't have a fan inside, and uh, at least the, not that I'm aware of. At least you can't hear it. Um, so yeah, it's just blowing out, blowing out that burnt plastic smell. Just not pleasant. All right, so the controls are working in Prey. Really, the only test you need here is opening and closing the toilet. Yeah, I'm not going to test it too much more. It's working. Console is getting a bit loud, but that's pretty typical for a 360. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and turn it off and uh, open it up and see <laughs> see what's going on inside of this thing. I have the faceplate off and all those other annoying clips undone. Let's go ahead and pull this top piece off if I can get it. And, oh, wow, it's actually pretty clean. Okay, okay. Pretty clean here. We got all the screws, I think. Yep, yep. Let's go ahead and take this apart and see what the inside looks like. All right, got all the screws out. Let's go ahead and take the top cover off and see what it looks like on the inside. Be prepared for the dust and dirt. Let's see. And, oh well, that's really clean. Even that part is clean. <laughs> Dude, this is the, this might be the cleanest 360 I've ever seen. Okay, um, this ain't gonna work for the video. We gotta do, we gotta make some dirt or something in here. All right, guys, so I got the rest of the screws out. We can take the top cover off now. Uh, I'm excited to see how much dust and dirt we got here. And, oh, yeah, baby. We got ramen noodles. We also got some nice old dirt here, um, as expected. Now, there's actually not quite as much dust in here as I thought there would be, but I got plenty of dirt, ramen noodles. No wonder the disk drive was so loud. But, man, these guys are going crazy with the ramen noodles today. They must have gone to the local Walmart, bought a 12-pack of ramen noodles for $3.79, and uh, given me the special of them. I don't know but uh because i definitely did not put those in there now let's take this piece off and oh wow what is this heck yeah i got a free incredibles game that's instead of keychains now there's stuff in incredibles in your fan let's go all right so the rest of it doesn't look too bad i'll give them credit there now let's go ahead and take the rest of it apart and take a look at this thermal paste and see uh what they did to it all right i finally got this first x clamp off let's go ahead and do the big reveal and see if they replace thermal paste three two one and oh crap yeah they put the thermal paste on there Okay, uh, yeah, that's a bad look. Let me, let me redo this. Yeah, that'll do it. All right, so I finally got the X-Camp off. Let's go ahead and see if they replace the thermal paste. And bada-bing, bada-boom. Uh, that's not even factory thermal paste. What is going on here? <laughs> yeah, so it looks, <laughs> it looks like they literally spread it around the outside and forgot to put it on the chip. Good job. Uh, let's take out, take off the next X-Clamp and see what it looks like. All right, I got that second X-Clamp off. Let's go ahead and do the big reveal. da 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 and crap, they did it again. Got that second X-clamp off. Let's go ahead and take this heat sink off. Three, two, one, and bada bing, bada boom. Looks like they did the same thing. Nothing up there. Looks like they tried to spread around the outside but forgot to put it on the chip and left some fuzz. Oh, got another visitor. That dirt I got had some bugs in it. That was nasty. Yeah, guys, I mean, got that two for one special today. A uh, classic. I gotta give this as a, a zero out of 10, a Z for zebra. I don't know what else to say. Uh, just a all around, Alright guys, so as I'm hoping you noticed by now, this is obviously an April Fool's joke. Um, these two consoles actually did come from DK Oldies a few months ago, and I made videos on them, and they weren't in, they weren't refurbished, um, but we went back, refurbished these, put them back together, and then, you know, did this little uh, this little jokester of a video for, for April Fool's. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below what you think, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Guys, don't listen to him. It's, 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 it's not an April Fool's. This is very serious. You have to listen to me. You have to unsubscribe now. It's very important. It's very important. You can't, you can't know. Ah! Number six. I bought 39 untested Xbox 360 consoles from Goodwill. And in this video, we're going to test, explore, and fix about 10 of the consoles and see if we can turn a profit. Guys, welcome to the Hampton Hall. My profit goal for this video is 300 bucks. So let's hope we can hit that. Now, uh, we're going to start with this fat 360 here, which is very beat up and dirty. It smells like bugs and uh, flip into the back. It is clearly a Xenon console, uh, no HDMI port. And you can see the port down here definitely says it's a Xenon. Hopefully it's not red ringed, but let's plug it in and see if it works. My nose is getting itchy from all the dust flying out of this console. But let's go ahead and turn it on, see if it works. So three, two, one. Come on, launch, please. Oh yes, let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 that's an old dashboard. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. No way, let's go.
This is unreal. Are you, oh my goodness. Dude, what a jackpot. Holy crap. We just hit a Blaze dashboard. Still got a guy signed in here. Wow, this is unreal. Is there a game in here? No, but of course the disk drive is stuck. Just like a, oh, that gave me the full, the full 2006 experience right there. Like, dude, I, I cannot believe we just booted up to the Blades dashboard here on a random console from a huge lot of, what is going on here? All right, we'll start with the profiles here and check out what's on this console. So we got Krogsund here with a five, <laughs> a five-star rep. You guys remember rep on the 360? What a throwback. Let's go ahead and click on this profile and see what he's got here. <laughs> This is like grade A 2006 Xbox Live stuff right here. We got, first of all, this is all in one, whatever. Uh, name is Matthew and he's on your mom's couch. Just like, what else do you expect from a 360 of this time in this, this era, man? I mean, uh, let's check out the games library here. And dude, we got 15 games played or 15 games on here. Last game played was Hexic HD. We got Battlefield 2 demo. We got the Dead or Alive 4 demo. Dead Rising, dude, this is, this is amazing. This is like, this is my guy. He's just got, demos galore i mean like this is how you did it back in the days of the 360 you just downloaded as many demos as possible uh they're all free amazing great times and uh dudes <laughs> are there any other profiles here let's go ahead and sign out and check it out we've got dude we have 10 profiles on this 360 what a jackpot all right we got a uh, b jessica we got the guy we just saw lauren matt no <laughs> noisel and last but not least we got two down here on xbox live which is uh s757 bibg X16X, that's like 2007, man. Um, let's go ahead and open this up and see what's up with it. So we got another five-star rep here, which is great to see. Uh, 2,600 gamer score, and uh, let's see, any mess? <laughs> <sighs> You can't make this up. This is this is straight up 2006, 2007 Xbox Live era, man. This is oh, this is the epitome of that. We got a uh, uh, first of all, it says Robert SKK for life. I don't know what that means. Uh, a bunch of other gibberish. No Man's Land, and then the last line here, uh, I can't say it or display it, but it says, word, word, you British word. I'll let you guess what that says. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I guess we can go to played games here and see the last games played. Uh, Call of Duty 4, Fusion Frenzy 2, Gears of War, Army of Two, uh, Halo 3 got on 960 gamer score, so you almost finished this game. Yeah, let's go ahead and check out the other Xbox Live profile as well. All right, so this one is what, Wall, Wall Gameth. Uh, let's go ahead and see if he's got a, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. This guy's got a five-star rep and a 23,000 gamer score. Dude, you are not recreation, you are pro. Like, like just picture this, this is 23,000 gamer score, like probably a year or two into the life cycle of the 360, because the Blaze dashboard was not around, not around too long. And the message says, who dares wins? And it says Scott from Suffolk, Virginia, which makes sense because I bought this whole lot of consoles from Virginia. And going to played games, you also got Call of Duty 4, Dead Space. I mean, we've, <laughs> we've had a remake of Dead Space since this since that came out. Uh, Rock Band, Gears of War 2, uh, just tons of, like, how many games are on here? Let me just scroll. I mean, that's impressive. There's like 30 games on here, two years into play. Like, let's check out the hard drive actually and see how many gigs it is. All right, so we got 13.9. Yeah, it's probably a 20 gig hard drive from basically launch. You saw it was manufactured in 2006, so like a year after launch. And one of the other things to note here is that we actually have the marketplace here, which was a tab that was added later to the Blaze dashboard. So this is not like an OG Blaze dashboard console. This is uh, a little bit later. Now checking out, let's go ahead and check the console settings and uh, see what the actual dashboard is. So we are on 2.0.6717, which is uh, actually the very last Blaze dashboard that was made. So this is like 2008 right before NXT came out. So we got we got pretty lucky here that they didn't update. Now I feel like there's a chance there's music on here from No way. We actually have we actually have music on this console. BYOB Band Girls Money bro. <laughs> Dude, I bet there's some tr game trailers here probably like Halo 3 or something. Uh we got Wait, wait. This is a music video, isn't it? Yeah, Dave Matthews Band music video from 07 here. Dude, this is like oh, Army of Two trailer, a skate trailer. Uh <laughs> A debut trailer of something. I mean, like, let's just open one of these up. And dude, even this control bar at the bottom is like, oh, what a throwback. Now, next up, of course, we should, we should probably open up the disk drive and try a game. So let's put a game in and see if it works. Of course, we got a Blaze dashboard game we got to play. So Call of Duty 2. So basically, if you have a game that's too new, it'll force you to update. So we want to make sure we're playing on a game that's really old. So Call of Duty 2 came out, I think it was a launch game. So this is definitely safe to play. We'll go ahead and put it in. And I actually saw some Call of Duty... Uh, save data on one of these profiles, so maybe we can find some some old save data here as well and load it up, or not because the console. Let me just let me let me let you hear this noise right here. You probably can't really hear it, but it's like squealing. Um, definitely not working, and now it's 
not ejecting. Okay, there it goes. And this is one of those situations where you're like, do I fix this console or do I let it just live in its old Blaze dashboard glory and let it sit? Because I've actually opened up a Blaze dashboard in the past console, Blaze dashboard console in the past, and um, physically just from the, the act of opening it up, it, it broke uh, because it was so fragile. So I don't know, maybe, but let's just go ahead and start by turning this thing off. And I'm gonna pop the faceplate off here and see if this thing's ever been opened up before. All right, so faceplate off and wow, I think this thing is unopened, wow. Yeah, that warranty sticker looks fully intact. Flip into the back, we do have some wear and tear like on the holes, so it looks like it's been attempted to be opened, but I guess they didn't go through with it. Ooh, man, I don't know. I'm not gonna fix it in this video, but guys, let me know down below, do you think I should try to fix this or should I just, should I just leave it? But uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, I have a 360 Slim that I think will be pretty interesting. It's, uh, of course, very filthy. And then flip it to the side, we have a, a hard drive with a GameStop warranty or a GameStop, excuse me, a GameStop refurbished sticker on it. By the way, this thing is like not pulling out hardly. Um, but yeah, GameStop refurbished sticker on that hard drive, 250 gigs, barely clicks into place. That's strange. A uh, warranty seal still appears to be intact, maybe. Uh, manufactured in 2010. But let's plug it in and see if it works. Okay, console turning on, free game. Dude, GTA 5, let's go, baby. Oh, that is awesome. All right, we've got GTA 5, and ooh, it is scratched up like crazy. Now, the downside with GTA 5 is this is just, this is just a play game. We have to have the other, other disc to install it, so that's unfortunate, but we got half of it, and we have, ooh, we got some profiles. Let's go ahead and check those out. Dude, and of course, <laughs> as I'm trying to check out the profiles, the game auto boots, come on, man, take me back to the home screen. I'm just trying to check out these dang profiles. All right, so we have a few profiles here. We got Briella with no pants on. We have Crested World 8151, Queen Bree, and Serenity. All of these have like no gamer score, which is interesting. So Queen Bree played a good bit of GTA 5, not that much. Not an Xbox Live profile, but there was one of these profiles was an Xbox Live profile. So let me check that one out and see if they got something on it. All right, here we are. Crested World 8151 played GTA one time, maybe? What is the achievement? They, <laughs> oh yeah, so they played the first mission, which is repoing the car, and that's it. Uh, Dude, how could you play GTA 5 and stop there? Oh, that's, that's so tragic. And of course, there's no bio or anything. All right, well, uh, let's just, uh, well, we already saw the games working. I mean, it booted up and everything. Um, I don't know, this console works perfectly fine despite the fact that it's got a GameStop refurbished sticker on it. Oh no, no, we have, oh, we have family settings on, dang it. All right, so in case you don't, guys don't know, if you have this grayed out initial setup sign, that means that you have family settings turned on, which, means you're going to be blocked from doing th certain things. So we need to guess this uh, guess this code now. So let me try this. <laughs> Dude, you can't make this up. Every, every time the code is something easy, like it was just the right trigger four times. That's all it was. <laughs> Dude, I'm checking out the passcode reset question and it's, what's your favorite person from history? From history? And the, uh, the answer is dad. What, what are the chances this person actually has like a really famous dad from history? Like a... George Washington, I don't know. But cool, that was easy enough. Um, but yeah, this console's good to go. It'll be listed down below on my website called jrobgaming.com. QR code's on the screen as well. Uh, go check that out. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. And just by the way, this is a console number 43. So next up, we have another 360 Slim, which is absolutely filthy. And uh, flip into the side. Let's see if we have hard drive inside and stuck. We don't, that's unfortunate. Flip into the back now. Warranty seal is still intact. Manufacture date 2011. And wow, there is so much dust just caked into the port there. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm about to like sneeze. Dude, we're definitely gonna see some bugs fly out of this one. Um, all right, let's plug it in and see if it works. Dude, I do that every time. I, I'm trying to lean over to plug it in and I accidentally press the eject button. And you can see right now there's no free game in here, but let me plug this all the way in. And boom, the console is booting up. Good sign. And the thing I find funny is about 360s is almost every single Slim I find has this sticker still on it, which is like, most people don't care. They just leave it on there and uh, let it ride. But let me know down below, do you guys, if you have a 360, did you keep that sticker on your console or did you get rid of it? I don't know, I just kind of find it funny when that thing is still there. There actually is a bug up here on top. I see a fly, a dead fly in there. De oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. All right, well, this console is just straight up freezing on the, as it's booting up. Uh, let me go ahead and look this up and see if I can fix it. So I finally got this console to boot up and uh, I actually had this issue once before in the past. And what I did is I took the hard drive out and they booted it up and it worked fine. So it was just a bad hard drive. Uh, this one unfortunately did not have a hard drive to take out. So it's probably an issue with the onboard storage. So what I did is I actually took a hard drive and put it in there. So we have our GameStop refurbished hard drive and it just booted up. So I guess it that fixed it for now. But we're looking at profiles that, were, that are actually on the onboard storage here because no, 
Nokirio, Nokirio was not on here before. Hold on, hold on. Let me just go ahead and check this uh, system storage right quick and see what it shows me. And yeah, even trying to boot up the storage devices is not loading. So there's definitely an issue with the onboard storage, but like I, I can't access it. Come on, man. Well, well let's just uh, let's just explore the profile for now and we'll deal with that later. So we got Nakiro here. Oh, this is all jacked up. So we can see on this screen, it shows, oh no, it froze. Come on, crap. I can't even sign out of the profile. There's just straight up nothing I can do with the internal hard drive. The console just like took off for five seconds then calm back down. What is going on here? So our next step in troubleshooting here is to take the console apart. And what I'm gonna try to do is remove the internal flash storage to see if we can boot up without that. And because I think that's corrupted or there's something wrong with it, that's why it's not booting up properly. Now we kind of have two things that could happen here. Uh, so the 360 Slim has two different motherboards. We have the Corona motherboard and the Trinity motherboard. Um, now, uh, from looking at the back here, you can look at the, uh, basically the power on here and, um, and the manufacture date. I believe this is a Trinity motherboard. I don't know for sure. And I think the Trinity motherboard is the one with a removable flash memory where you can just like pop it off the board, which will be really easy. If it doesn't have that, it's gonna be a lot more work, but let's go ahead and just finish this tear down here and see what's inside. Like, holy crap, this thing is just absolutely covered in dust. It's like, it's not even dust, it's kind of like the smoker dust, you know, when you smoke in your house and you get this uh, filthy nastiness in here. Yes, I see the module, I can see the flash memory. And now that the disk drive is out of the way, you can see it there. So basically this is the flash memory inside of the, the console. Um, it's basically built into the console, it's four gigs, and we should be able to just pop it off, I believe. Yep, there it goes, so it's got this little uh, well, it's also got a little pad there that kind of holds it in place, but oh yeah. So we have basically a little proprietary connector there that plugs into the board. And so now if we try to boot this up without this piece, I think it'll st still boot up. I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't find too much info online with a quick Google search, but we're here to try stuff out. So let's try it and see what happens. Now for the moment of truth, let's see if it turns on. We got life. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, yes, yes, we put it to the main menu. Okay, okay. That's a good sign. And if we go to storage, it should just show up as nothing. Yes, no storage device is found. So it actually loaded up itself. It shows me that. Yes, I think this is working now. Let's go, baby. Of course, since there's no storage on here. Oh, we got, we got a disc in there. That must be why it's showing up as that. Now let's go ahead and try to boot up GTA 5 right here and see if it works. Now sure enough, the game is loading up. I'll probably have to put in the first disc to actually install it, but we don't need to do that right now. I just wanted to make sure it can actually, yeah, there it is tell me I need to install the first disk. Uh, but I just wanna do this so I can make sure that the you know, disk drive is working. I'll, uh, I guess I'll clean out the inside since it's absolutely filthy. And then it'll be listed down below for sale. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up we have a console that I'm pretty excited for and it's a complete unbox, well, hopefully complete unbox, Xbox 360. And you can see it's obviously a slim with 250 gigs. Um, actually comes with two free games. I highly doubt these are in here anymore. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's inside of here. All right, we got on top, we got half of a power brick. We have an HDMI cable, and then we have our console, which, hey, is actually in pretty good condition. Now going further, we have uh, two AV cables, one on this, actually three AV, <laughs> we have two AV cables over here, one over here, and a power brick. I think I see, yeah, there's like a the <laughs> warranty manual thing in there. Um, so yeah, not too much going on inside of there. Let's put that to the side and take a look at the console. And yeah, this console is in really nice condition. Now flip into the side, let's see if there's actually 250 gigs in here. And hey, there it is. Nice, dude. Always good to see. And we do have still, still have our warranty seal intact, manufactured in 2012. Uh, so it should be a Corona motherboard. Let's turn it on. Any free games here? Maybe? Yes, let's go. Halo 4. All right, nice. And apparently it's only disc one, which is just awesome to see. We do have some scratching on the back, nothing nothing too crazy. Disk drive works perfectly. Let's go ahead and see if uh, console boots up. Well, before I can even log into our profile, the uh, Halo 4 is booting up and working without an issue. Now, as all the game works, now heading back to the main menu, you can see our profiles now. We got Abby, Alexa, Dad, uh, Sherlock, Tristan, and un Unbid Carcass 9. Uh, definitely looks like a family. I mean, there's Dad there. It's gotta be a family of people playing this 360. We'll go ahead and boot up Unbid Carcass 9 because it's an Xbox Live profile and see what's up with it. All right, so we got no bio, no message, lame. And last game played is Minecraft in 2020. Wow, that's interesting. So they left, <laughs> I bet this copy of Halo 4 has been sitting in here for six years and they just played Minecraft later on and left the console or left the game in there. But then scrolling back, we go all the way back to 2012. Wow, so 2012 to 2020 is actually a pretty wide lifespan for uh, playing 360 games. We got a kind of a mix of mix of games here and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check out the other profiles. So I'm interested to check out the Alexa profile because she actually has 1850 gamer score. 
Uh, not too bad. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, that's funny how the avatar is just like straight up like looks like your NBA 2K player. Hold on, I forgot you could actually <laughs> make him dizzy. That's funny. Uh, looks like <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Like your, your NBA 2K my player rolls in with a brown shirt and, and black pants. Um, but then we got this nice fancy like medieval looking thing in the background. I don't know. Uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, Minecraft in 2020 and Halo 4 in 2017. So hold on. This has like almost the exact same play history. So I'm back on Unbid Carcass 9 and no, these are definitely different profiles. They just have like the exact same play history. I mean, even the gamer score is almost exactly the same. That's that's kind of wild. But of course, the other thing to check is the, the My Games tab. We'll see what kind of games are downloaded on here. And we got 16 games, not bad. Of course, Kingdom for Keflings, Doritos Crash Course, Goat Simulator Trial, Halo 4, um, and of course, Minecraft. Wait, hold on, hold on. I did this on my last video, but let's go ahead and boot up Minecraft and see what kind of world they have saved here. Oh, dude, we have a lot of worlds. All right, I gotta try out Amusement Park. <laughs> okay, so I booted straight up and we got a like a rainbow wall here and just an open field. Uh, I've said it before, but I don't know much about Minecraft. I've only played a handful of times, so I don't really know what I'm doing here. Just a uh, full disclosure, we got <laughs> a bunch of beds and that's about it in here. I'm just breaking stuff. This honestly looks like somebody started a world and they were trying to, I mean, they said amusement parks, so they were probably trying to build an amusement park inside of this wall here and they just never finished. Kind of sad. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I just booted up and immediately died. What is happening? All right, whatever, I, I quit. And we actually didn't finish checking out all the games here. Uh, we also got a few other Peggle Risk Factions. Ooh, we got Skyrim here. But anyways, this console is good to go, fully working. It'll be listed down below for sale on my website. And let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, we'll try out one of the Xbox 360e consoles. And this one is uh, just looks like it was dragged on the pavement. I don't know why it's so beat up. Now flip into the back. Warranty seal is still intact. And that, oh, this is a game. Oh, no, it's a GameStop console. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we got our GameStop sticker up here. We've got an Xbox 360, wait, hold on. <laughs> they call this a Super Slim. They're mixing up their PS3 and Xbox 360 nomenclature. Uh, and yeah, it's GameStop refurbished, so no clue what we'll find here, um, but it is very filthy. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see if it works. All right, well, we're booted up here. Free game? Oh, it definitely is. Yes, let's go, Left 4 Dead 2. Aw, oh, baby. And of course, as per usual, it's very scratched up and there's like a little bit of gunk right there. What? <laughs> How? I don't know. Um, but we got one profile on here. We got at abbyshop003 with 300 gamer score. So looks like somebody that picked up a 360 and played one game, AKA Left 4 Dead 2. But let's check out the profile and see if that's what happened. Yeah, Left 4 Dead 2 and Red Dead Redemption. Oh, Minecraft and Sims 3 Pets. Uh, but Left 4 Dead 2, they actually played a decent amount of uh, back in 2021. Wow, but yeah, nothing else on here. Let's go ahead and put the game in and see if it works. So yeah, the game's loading up. Uh, no issue with this console at all. It'll be listed down below for sale on my website called jrobgaming.com, so go check it out if you're interested. And let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we have another 360 Slim, which looks like it's literally been dragged through the dirt. I, I, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. And flip into the back, we have a manufacturing 2012, and warranty still is still intact, console number 40. Let's see, do we have a hard drive here? Uh, I bet we do. Hey, let's go, baby. All right, 250. Now the real question is, will we have a free game? Let's just start there. Okay. There we go, man. <sighs> okay, we got a profile here. And this, <laughs> dude, this console's in four by three mode. Let's we'll switch it up. Let's we'll start with the games this time. Thir Wait a second. It just said 33 games and it jumped down to 32. How did that happen? Either way, this is a ton of games. We got Dragon Age Origins, Force Unleashed 2, Assassin's Creed Revelation. Holy crap. Wait, these are all... Oh my goodness. Holy crap. This is the jackpot. Hold on, hold on. Let me just show you guys full games. You've got Dragon Age Origins, Force Unleashed, Force Unleashed 2, Assassin's Creed Revelations. Holy crap. I'll just scroll through and you guys can pause if you want to see it, but... <laughs> Dude, we have 24 full games and there's still just some other random like demos and stuff that that's unbelievable that's that's wild okay so this is a X, xgc sortie i bet it, oh, it's got 19,000 gamer score no surprise there drunken fist <laughs> joshua and cameron so this is like a shared profile that's funny and uh ask if interested in joining xgc what is xgc so i'm sure some sort of like clan or something let me know down below if you know uh but uh, this <laughs> this is unreal uh, we got GTA 4 is the last game played here. That's funny, playing GTA 4 in like 2017. 113 games played? Wow, and the very first one was Burnout Paradise in 2008. So that, <laughs> from 2008 to 2017 is a wide span. Uh, let's go ahead and open the tray up, put a game in, and see if it works. <laughs> we got the classic booted up Call of Duty 2. 
Uh, but again, it's working. But anyways, this console is fully working. It'll be listed down below for sale on my website. And of course, it'll be listed with all of the games that are already on here. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we have a Glossy 360 Slim, which is uh, pretty beat up as all the glossy ones are. Now let's go ahead and check if we have a hard drive here. And we do, 250 gigs, dude. <laughs> it's actually amazing how many hard drives I've gotten in this lot so far. Uh, manufactured in 2010, warranty still still in tech. Let's go ahead and plug it in, turn it on, see if it works. And wait, dude, I think this is, hold on, this is the console I actually tested briefly in my unboxing video because it still has the <laughs> it still has the dish tray sticker on the dish tray itself which is hilarious but let's, let's go ahead and fully test this thing out though and oh yeah this definitely is the same the same console i tested out in a previous video uh, anyways this console is good to go it'll be listed for sale down below let's go ahead and move on to the next one so next up i have another glossy 360 slim which of course very beat up now flip into the side the real question is do we have a hard drive and what do you know we do Amazing. Uh, flip into the back. Oh, hold on, hold on. Ooh, no, no, no. It's a GameStop refurbished console. Come on, man. And it's even had the GameStop refurbished sticker removed, so you know somebody's done something inside. But let's go ahead and <laughs> plug it in and see if it works. We got power here. Now, do we have a free game is the real question. And, oh, baby, Skate 3. Oh, this is probably my favorite 360 game. So this, oh, it's amazing. This looks not too terrible. And it boots up without an issue. Now, does the game load? That's the real question. Now, a uh, profile here is called Alone Ant 1197029. Okay, that looks like a generic name. Um, and yes, indeed, the game is loading up. I don't know anything about skating in real life, but I, I love the skate games. They're just, I don't know, they're kind of like, it's almost like GTA on, on a skateboard in some ways. Uh, definitely a fun game, though. Oh. Oh. Why? Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, we got the Beast. We got Awesome, Brody. Uh, G <laughs> of course, we got Jesus here. Well, anyways, the game is working. I could mess around on this game all day long. But let's go ahead and check out these profiles here. See if we have anything else on this console. We got, let's see, we have our standard profile of Alone Ant. We got Marine, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Super Awesome, and Skya. Mr. Super Awesome, don't let me down. Oh, he didn't let me down. Dude, what a what a profile here. You got the shorts, the cowboy boots. Oh, that's uh, amazing. Skate 3, Minecraft. Uh, but yeah, this console's good to go. It'll be listed down below for sale. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up, I have another 360E, and this one's actually not quite as beat up. Let's go ahead and see if we have a hard drive in here. I'm sure we probably do. Yep, what do you know? A 250, and dust flies everywhere. Hold on, actually, oh no, the, ooh, the side of this console is disgusting. Ugh. Okay, well, let's plug it in, see if it works. It's three, two, one. We got life. Do I hear a game inside? No, no game. Oh, we got some profiles here. We got Applied Clover 6, Beast 35, Beast Killer 35. <laughs> Boy, that's hilarious. We got Beast 35 and Beast Killer 35. <laughs> uh, Sound Wolf, Holy Shotgun, and uh, this is actually some funny profiles on here. Let's go ahead and check these out and see what's up. Oh, stud. Yes. That is the most 360, <laughs> yes, be a baller, yes. Stud and be a baller, that is the the most, and his name is Brendan, yes. Okay, okay, this is what I'm talking about here. Black Ops 2 in 2017, yes. Uh, FIFA 16, MLB 2K 13, and playing that in 2016, why? I don't know, oh, dude, he played NCAA 14 back in 2015. Should've left that in the console for me, that'd be worth like, the same amount as three consoles themselves. The, the game is so expensive. I got Soundwolf up next. What is what is going on with the profile picture? I can't even tell what that is. Uh, oh, he's got 9,500 gamer score. Coffee swag. I, I guess he looks like he likes coffees. Looks pretty fancy. And uh, nothing, no bio, but let's check out the last time it was played. Call of Duty Ghosts back in 2017. Uh, Rainbow Six in 2016. And the game's booting up here without an issue. Now, the last thing I want to check is the My Games. Let's see if they have any games downloaded here. All right, moment of truth. Do we have, ooh, we got something. We got Fruit Ninja Connects, Jackpot. Uh, Hexic HD on every console ever. Risk Faction Skate 3, which I just put in the console. The Gun Stinger and Trials HD. Uh, so not much, but the console is fully working. It'll be listed down below for sale. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next up is another 360 Slim, and this one is in pretty dang nice condition. Now, is there a hard drive? You betcha there is. Man, there always is. 250, wait, wait, 320, oh. Hold on, is this, is it, this must be the 320 from the Halo console. I think it's the, what is it? The Halo 4 console I think has 320 in it. Nice, dude. And we got the warranty seal still intact. Man, that is even more of a jackpot than I thought. Let's plug it in and see if it works. All right, plug it in. Is there a game? Oh man, no free game. I wonder, somebody had to intentionally buy the 320 gig hard drive and put it in here. So maybe there's a bunch of games downloaded. 
I hope so. Let's let's check. Uh, honestly, probably not. The hard the, the profile is here: 255, 140, 60, 1145. So not much going on here. Uh, Raptor speeding has the most. But let's go ahead and start with the uh, the My Games tab and just see if there's anything downloaded. Oh, dude, I was right. We got Angry Birds trilogy. Hold on, let me just move this to full games right here. 29. Full oh, dude, yeah, I was right. Somebody just bought this big hard drive to download a bunch of games. Angry Birds trilogy, Battlefield 2. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops, Call of Duty Elite, Crisis 3, Dirt 3, F1 2013, Fallout New Vegas, Family Game Night. Uh, I'll just keep scrolling and you guys can read it if you want to. Metro 2033, uh, Heart Pop Pursuit, Once Upon a Monster. What is that? I don't know. Skyrim, Sniper Elite V2. Dude, this is insane. And dude, like this, this console must have come from somebody else or somebody must have deleted their profile because how do you have like four profiles and the most any of them have is 1145 gamer score, but you have 29 games downloaded? Uh, something strange is going on here. And this, hold on, this console was last played in 2022, Family Game Night 3. Impressive. Okay. Okay. I see you. A lot of, <laughs> played a bunch of Wipeout as well. Yes, yeah, so the first game played was 2020. So I'd, I'd have to guess that this console was handed down or, or sold to somebody else and they somehow kept all the games but deleted the profile, uh, something along those lines. I don't know. Let me just boot up one of the games and make sure it works. Yes, yeah, so game is working here. And man, what, what a lot. The number of consoles we found in here that had hard drives, and not just hard drives, but titles downloaded. And then the Blades dashboard console, just amazing. I'm sure we hit a profit goal. I'll throw the profit on the screen. But guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Remember, we'll have Hampton Hall episodes every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday throughout December. So make sure to tune in. And guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Number five. I bought a brand new PS5 Slim, and in this video, we're gonna see what happens when you put a foreign disc in it, we're gonna see what happens when you swap disc drives, and we're just gonna do some other random experiments. So we're gonna start by trying to swap the disc drives, and in case you guys don't know, the PS5 Slim is actually meant to be able to swap out disc drives very easily. They're modular, so basically you pop off the disc drive and put a new one on, and I, uh, I bought two PS5 Slims just to try this out. So here's the situation. I have a disk drive attached to this PS5 Slim that's actually registered to this console. I have another disk drive that's registered to another PS5 Slim, and we're just gonna swap it in and see if it works or if it's actually locked to the other console. So we start by snapping this piece off, and then it's actually very easy to pull the disk drive off. You just lift it up there, pull that off, and bang. We're just gonna go ahead and plug this one in. Snaps in right there, clicks into place, very easy. I'll put this piece back on, then we'll turn it on and see what happens. All right, so we're all plugged in, and guys, comment down below if you're an OG of the channel because the OGs, they know about the foreign disc series. That's where my channel started years ago. Been a while since I've done one, but let's go ahead and turn this thing on and just uh, see what Sony tells us. Okay, so it just pops up and says your disk drive is connected to your PS5. To use your disk drive, register it to your PS5. That was easy, I guess. Okay, well, good, good on you, Sony. They they made it simple. You can swap in a new disk drive and it just works. You press register. Now, of course, uh, like they mentioned, you have to be connected to the internet to register your disk drive, but it looks like you can swap in any disk drive and it'll just work. So now I could take this drive, disk drive, put it on the other console and it'll work fine. So that is good to see. That's very good for repairability. It, of course, it's kind of questionable, you know, 20 years down the line, can you register a new disk drive still or are you, are you just done for? I don't know, but let's go ahead and move on to the foreign disk part of the video. And we got some more experiments to do later in the video. But uh, in case you guys don't know what a foreign disk video is, I basically put in just uh, a disk from any console possible and just see what the PS5 does. See if it reads it, see if it plays it. I don't know, but we're gonna start with the PS5 disk right here, which is just the standard and you'll see kind of a, a baseline of what should happen. Cool, so there we are, put the disk in, cues it for copy. Um, that's what we expected to happen. Let's go ahead and inject this one and we'll kind of work our way backwards to PS4, PS3, PS2, PS1. Then we'll go to Xbox and all that good stuff. All right, next up we got Big Chungus for the PS4. This is my favorite game of all time. Let's go ahead and put this in. Oh yeah, I forgot. We got a Big Chungus map here just in case you get lost. <laughs> it made some weird noises like I was trying to rip it up. But you can see in the top middle of the screen it's trying to read it but just no dice at all. Let's go ahead and inject this and move on to a PS3 game. And by the way, guys, we do know a real PS4 game will actually work on this, but we're not gonna try that. We're gonna go to straight to PS3, MW2, a classic. I played this on 360 all the time with my friends, locally, not online, like the olden days. Oh, oh, okay, so it recognizes it. It says the disc is not supported by the PS5. Oh, it's just an infinite loop of going home. Oh, that sucks. I, I always, what I like seeing about these is that there are some consoles where it'll boot up a splash screen, it'll tell you like, it'll recognize, be like, hey, you put a PS2 disc in, you can't play that. Um, so it would, it's always cool to see a console that does that. I wish it popped up and said like, hey, it's a PS3 game, you can't play it here. Um, but you know, they don't go that far. Now, next up we got GTA uh, Vice City for the PS2, another just classic. Let's go ahead and see what Sony wants to do with this one. 
dude, that was straight up. That, was, that took like two seconds. I was like, nah, <laughs> nah, dude, you ain't playing. You ain't playing no GTA in my system. Oh man. All right, let's try out our PS1 game. We got Tarzan. Probably gonna do the exact same thing as a PS2, where it recognizes it in about two seconds and says no thanks. Dude, it's like playing around with the PS1 game in there. It's like meow. No, I don't. It doesn't like it. It won't even let me eject. There we go. I don't, that was a little odd. And next up, we got a PSP game. We'll see if we can slot this in here. Not even just PSP, it's a Japanese PSP game. Got our <laughs> dang UMD. It actually is thin enough that it would fit in there, but it doesn't even try to pull it in. That's actually kind of funny. I did not even expect it to fit in that slot there. All right, next up we have Xbox games, but actually one more thing I want to try. This is like kind of like one of my weird experiments I want to do. I want to put a PS5 game back in, and then we're going to try to unhook the, the disk drive while it's booted up and just see what happens. So can I move a PS5 while a disk is in? I know you can't do that on a PS4, but I guess it works on a PS5. Let me flip this thing upside down and we'll try to take the disc out while it's copying and just see what happens. Or excuse me, take the disc drive out while it's copying. And let me know down below, do you guys play your PS5 upside down? Uh, I know there are some people that do. All right guys, so you can hear it spinning up and it says copying. Let me go ahead and sit there so you can see it. Yeah, so it's definitely copying. Now it's pretty simple. We just unplug this thing and see what it does. I really hope you don't brick our drive right here. Ooh. Okay, it just says preparing to turn off your PS5. I guess that's a nice safety mechanism. Okay, so it's, it is unplugged. Let's go ahead and plug it back in now. Huh, that, dude, that is a, that's a new error message I've never seen before. Your disk drive was not removed properly. Like six months ago, I would have never expected to see a, an error like that on any console ever. But uh, yeah, when removing your disk drive, make sure to first turn off your PS5, then unplug the AC power to prevent data loss, corruption, or damage to your disk drive. Okay, I, it looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and make sure it still spins up and works though. It looks like it picked up where it left off, so that's good to see. I guess it's not an issue if you <laughs> accidentally unplug your disk drive. Not that you should be, but uh, that was, I don't know, that's just kind of funny. Let's go back to our Xbox games now. Yikes. By the way, guys, don't flip your PS5 around when you have a disk in, because it just gave me a nasty noise. <laughs> All right, so next up, we're gonna start with our, we're gonna go with our Xbox games. We got an OG Xbox game to start with. We got Halo. This is one of those games where I feel like it might take me to a, some sort of Xbox splash screen and, and just, you know, show like a little video or something. I've seen that before on, I don't remember what console, but I've definitely seen that before. But let's just see what happens. And, oh yeah, there it is. We got play Blu-ray discs and DVDs. It goes under media and what? <laughs> to play this DVD, change the DVD region code of your PS5. I did not even know you could do this. This is a US game. I mean, it's a game, not a DVD. I mean, I guess it is a DVD. What? what? Okay, apparently you have five changes you can make to your DVD region code, which I guess is nice if you want to play a different region of DVDs, but I don't know, man, so many questions, but uh, all right, I'm just gonna leave that as is. Maybe the 360 game will do the same. Yeah, it looks like I might do the same thing for the for MW2 for the 360. Uh, pull it up and it, yeah, it wants me to change the, you would think if it wants me to change the DVD region code, it would like tell me which region to change it to though. Dude, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna try to risk messing with that. Uh, change in the DVD region though. I did, I did not even know that was a thing. All right, next up is the interesting one. We've got this Xbox One slash Xbox Series X game, Star Wars. Let's go ahead and put this in and see what happens. And then after that, we actually have a, a straight up Xbox Series X game, you know, a game that only works in the Series X, not on the Xbox One. You, you gotta love how Xbox makes that so confusing. This is one of those games where I think it would maybe pop up with something because it's, okay, yeah, so that, that makes sense. It's an unreadable disc because it recognizes it's a Blu-ray disc, but it's just unreadable because it's an Xbox game. Okay, cool. All right, next up we got 2K21, which is a straight up, like I said, just a Series X game. Probably do the same thing, but we'll check. Yep, same thing. All right, let's go ahead and check that. And we'll move on to some uh, Nintendo games. So this is where things get interesting. We first up have a GameCube game, which as you guys remember, GameCube games are very small. And like uh, the Wii disk drive was made in such a way that it could accept a small disk like this and actually direct it into the right uh, spot so it can you know take in a small disc. I'm not sure that the PS5 has that functionality of taking in a small disc, but maybe it does. I don't know. Uh, this is a little scary though. It might uh, it might get stuck. I don't know. Let's just go ahead and try it though. I'm gonna get a close up view of this one in case it does get stuck. All right. Um... Yikes! <laughs> it did get stuck. It pulled it in like a tiny bit and then it just gave up and now it thinks there's no disc in there, but there isn't. Oh no, that's not good. Um, okay, uh, let me try to <laughs> get that out now. All right, so apparently you can twist this thing clockwise and it should push the disc out, but I think the disc is so small it's not, it's not even catching to be pushed out. So I think we might have to go in here with some tweezers, which is scary. But let me, let me try to flash right light here first. 
So I'll show some B-roll here, but fortunately, uh, opening up the disk drive and pulling the disk out was not too hard. I just gotta put a bunch of screws back together, but the good thing is here, it's modular. I just took the disk drive right off and took everything apart very easily. Uh, not too difficult at all, but uh, yeah, super sketch. All right, guys, well, moving on to the next game. Now that I've, I'm done screwing up my disk drive, hopefully it still works, but let's go ahead and go with Mario Kart Wii, an absolute classic see what this does inside of the disk drive. I mean, based on what I saw earlier with the Xbox 360 and Xbox games, I, I feel like it might want me to change my DVD region. Um, oh, and here we go. Got another message about my disk drive being messed up. Uh, let's just uh, see what this game does though. Oh, huh. Interesting, this one's just straight up unreadable. And then next up, we'll go to a Wii U game. We've got Lego City Undercover, an absolute classic. No, it's not. Uh, let's see what this does. I believe, I don't, Wii U discs are not Blu-ray, right? They're they're a, they're a weird coding, but they're not. My disk drive is like pulling discs in slow now. I don't know if it's because it's not a PS5 game or because I messed it up. But um, this is my PS5 Slim, so don't worry. I'm not giving this. I'm not selling this to anybody. This is my PS5 Slim that I'm screwing up. Now let's see what this Wii U disc does here. <laughs> it sure is trying really hard. It spins up, spits it back out, pulls it back in, spins it up, spits it back. <laughs> it's just not even doing anything. This is actually okay. Most of the other games at least told me something eventually. This one just. Yeah, it's like, that just came out weird. Now, let me try my PS5 game again and make sure it's just, I bet a Wii U, guess, I bet a Wii U disc is just a different thickness, so it's just, yeah, that's smooth. Okay, so it was just the, the Wii U disc is not quite the right thickness, so it uh, spits it out a little odd. But next up, we got some, kind of some mystery games, and uh, yeah, let's move on to those. So we have some movies, PC games, Sega Dreamcast, that sort of thing. Let's we'll start out with the Grinch for Sega Dreamcast. Now, if I remember correctly, I think Dreamcast games Maybe it was, was it Dreamcast games? I think it's Dreamcast games. When you put them in, if your console can read music, it'll, like music CDs, it'll pull up the music and play the soundtrack from your Dreamcast game. So I don't think the PS5 can read uh, CDs like that, but let's, let's see. Yeah, this one's making some weird noises, not showing anything. And you know, the thing I didn't do, I should probably put a <laughs> my PS5 game back in there and make sure the disk drive is working at all after I did all that work on my disk drive to pull the the GameCube disc out. So let me put Spider-Man back in and make sure it at least tries to copy the game. Okay, cool. It is copying, so I didn't break the disc drive. <laughs> let's, let's go ahead and move on to Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 next. I do want to point out something that's, that I've been noticing on the PS5 Slim disc drive. I've noticed this on both consoles I have, and I've noticed this before I started messing with the drive, but like the disc is tilted downward when you eject it, which is like not a big deal, but just strange. We haven't had much luck with the last few discs. Dis, discs. So let's see what this does. Oh dude, that is a flashback. I bought this, I guess, from the, sh sh I can't even say that word anymore, sh sh Scholastic, Scholastic Book Fair. You guys remember that, like in elementary school or whatever? Back in early 2000s, that's what we had, this, the Scholastic Book Fair. And I, did, I didn't buy books, I bought PC games like this. All right, uh, unread unreadable disc, can't recognize the disc, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we'll check that. Next up, <laughs> dude, this one's gonna be funny. We have this iCarly Complete Season. Uh, DVD that I found inside of an Xbox 360. I, I think it was a 360. This one should just read up as a DVD, but let's let's uh, let's verify. Okay, there it is. And will it load up? Hey, there we go. It is loading up. That's pretty sweet. I uh, didn't even know that disc worked, but all right, we'll check that one and move on to the next one. Next up, I have a Blu-ray, which I, I know the Blu-ray is going to work. I'm going to try to 4K, um, which I know will work as well. But I just want to verify because I I haven't put a 4K in a I haven't put a 4K Blu-ray in a PS5 Slim yet. So let's just Verify works. Yeah, there it goes. It even recognizes what the what the disc is. Now, last but not least, I have a, an absolute classic. I have not only, and is it is it an HD DVD, but it's Billy Madison, one of the uh, best movies of all time. It, it is pretty funny. I, would, I wouldn't call it a best movie of all time, but let's go ahead and put this in and see what it does. I hope the PS5 shreds it to bits. Wouldn't that be hilarious? You know what? I actually have, <laughs> this is funny, but I have an HD DVD player just sitting over here. I can't plug it into my, PS5. I mean, I guess I could, but it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything. I'm mean, just trying to read it. No, I just stopped. <laughs> All right, so that's the last game. There was there's one more experiment I want to try, and I was debating whether I wanted to try this or not. But in my video yesterday, when I bought this PS5, I made a uh, basically a, uh, a comment in that video and said, should I try taking off the disk drive while it's either updating or registering and seeing if it bricks something? I don't really want to try that because I don't want to brick my disk drive or my console, but. Dude, let's let's do it. All right, so I gotta turn this thing off first, and then actually, I wonder if you get hot swap the disk. No, you can't hot swap it because it'll turn it off automatically when I take the disk drive out. So let's just turn this thing off, swap the disk drive, try to register it, and while it's registering, I'm gonna pull the plug and just see what happens. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna destroy two PS5s doing this. All right, let me unplug this power. Let's go ahead and remove this disk drive. 
which is from my other PS5, so I bought just so I could do these experiments. And then we'll put this drive in. All right, new disk drive is in place. Let's go ahead and turn this bad boy on. All right, so we have the screen again where it says your disk drive is connected, but we need to register it. So I think as soon as I press OK, it'll start registering, and I should pull the plug. Yep, there we go. All right, that was not quite as bad as I thought it would be. It just kind of turned back off. As you saw, I pulled the plug right as it was registering. Now let's go ahead and plug it back in, turn the console back on and see what it does. All right, so it just gives me a warning that says your disk drive wasn't moved properly, just a standard thing. But let's see if it lets me register it. Wait, did we just figure out a workaround for the disk drive? Because that definitely did not finish registering it. And, and oh no, no, there it is. Okay, now it pops up, says I can't use it. Why, why did it not tell me that immediately? All right, we'll restart this and see if we can register the disk drive now. All right, so we got the registering screen. Let's go ahead and see if it actually completes this time. There it goes. All right, so it, it looks like it completed this time. Let me go ahead and put a disk in to just verify it works. Yep, there it goes. It is copying the game. So props to Sony. It looks like they made this thing foolproof. You can't really break it. I mean, I don't want to go that far, but of my experiments that seem to pass all the, all the tests here, uh, it didn't quite pass the foreign disk test. But guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the blast to the past. And I'll see you next time. Number four. So DK Oldies sent me a replacement console for the non-refurbished PS3 they sent me a few weeks ago. And in this video, we're going to open it up. We're going to take an in-depth look at it and see if they actually refurbished anything this time. I'll link the last video down below, but just for a quick recap, they sent me a filthy uh, PS3 console backwards compatible. And they also sent me a third-party controller, which is not compatible with PS2 games, which is pretty bad for a backwards compatible PS3. So we're going to see what they sent me this time. And before I open it up, I wanted to show you the email we sent them uh, kind of asking for a, for a new console. And so here it is. It said, hi, I ordered a PS3 from you guys last month and it was supposed to be refurbished. I've attached some photos of this PS3 and would like to return this console for one that is actually refurbished this time. Um, yeah, so we were a little bit sassy, but I mean, you guys saw the last console. It was disgusting. I, I, I think we deserve a new console there. So we attached some photos there. And so here's the response they sent back. They said, hello, thanks for reaching out to me. Sorry to hear that you received your console in that condition. Then a bunch of few sentences about how to return it, whatever. And then here's the funny part. They said, for future reference, opening up a console does void the warranty, but I talked to my department lead and we'll, we'll be sending out a replacement and we'll work with you here. So they're saying they're only sending out a replacement because it's just like a special case. Like, uh, usually we don't allow people to open up their console and see that it hasn't been refurbished, but we'll, we'll work with you here this time. So just, I don't have many words for that. Just kind of funny, but let's go ahead and open this console up. And now, as you can see, the label clearly is from DK Oldies. Some people don't believe me for some reason, but uh, let's go ahead and open it up now. All right, we got a sliced open. Let's go ahead and see what's inside of here. We've got some packaging and here is our info. All right, so this right here is a shipping label to send it back. I'll put that to the side. So here's the packing slip and on the note it says, please clean. <laughs> so they, they had to notify department, their department that they actually needed to clean the console this time. That's pretty funny. No idea what all these other stickers mean. Now the concern here is it says no controller. So I guess they're not sending me a real controller that'll actually work with PS2 games. To be fair, I didn't tell them that, but I, I guess they haven't watched the video. I don't know. Let's go ahead and see what's in, inside of this bubble wrap. All right, so first of all, we have a little slip right here, system and game startup. This thing is just useless for PS3s. There's nothing on here that helps with setting up a PS3. I don't know why they include that. All right, so here's the console. And honestly, at first glance, I'm not sure it looks any better than the last one. It's extremely scratched up. You get some pretty big scratches on the top. One right there, another right there, one right there. There's just tons of scuffs on it. Um, here on the front, you also get a bunch of scuffs and even a bunch of fingerprints and stuff. Not sure if those are mine or somebody else's bottom is uh, very very scratched up as well now I, I can't complain too much because this is a cos cosmetically flawed that's what it's supposed to be so uh, and these things get scratched up just from looking at them of course got your dk oldies warranty sticker <laughs> on the side which is always funny and here on the back it does say cech e01 which is the correct console i'll do a comparison later to the other the other ps3 because i haven't sent it back yet i'll be sending it back soon but let's go ahead and plug this console in and test it out and see if it actually works. We got the console plugged in and to keep it authentic to the DK Audis experience, I'm gonna use my DoubleShock 2, DoubleShock 3 again. Let's go ahead and flip on the switch. Got a red light, turn it on. Any free games? Nope, <laughs> no free games. The console did indeed boot up. I'm on the main screen now, I already did all the setup, connected to the internet. Now let's go ahead and check what system firmware we're on just to see when it was last updated. So we're on 4.75, which is, I think that's relatively recent. Uh, at least not super old. I'll, I'll throw up on the screen when uh, when this is from. We also have 74 gigs of free space, which sounds accurate. Now let's go ahead and put a game in and see if it works. So like I said, this is a backwards compatible PS3, so it should be compatible with PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. We're going to start with PS3 because that's probably the games you'd play the most on a PS3, obviously. And uh, we'll make sure this loads up and works. 
so I got Call of Duty Black Ops booted up now. Seems to work fine. I had to install a little little bit. The fan is ramping up a little bit, which is expected. Uh, hopefully, they change the thermal paste out because these things are these things are known to die um, just because of how hot they get. Yeah, so far everything's working well. Uh, let's go ahead and test out a PS2 game now and see if that works. So I got GTA Vice City, a classic here. We'll go ahead and put it in. Make sure this thing plays PS2 games. I mean, that's the reason why everybody buys a backwards compatible PS3. Like, there's there's no reason to have a backwards compatible PS3 if you don't want to play PS2 games. So GTA Vice City is loading up, but I can't do anything because as we learned last time, and as most of you probably already knew, you can't use third-party controllers on PS2 games on the PS3. But I think that's a pretty big oversight when they're sending out PS3 consoles, backwards compatible PS3 consoles, and they say they're going to send a compatible controller. Like, yeah, you can get away with sending a third-party controller, except for the fact that it literally does not work on PS2 games. Like, it's like if you're going to sell a backwards compatible PS3, the controller needs to work with PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. So that's a that's a pretty big oversight. Now, to be fair on this replacement, I did not ask for for a replacement controller. I probably should have. Uh, but I also think they should just know that like they're selling so many of these things They should be sending out compatible controllers that actually work with ps2 games GTA Vice City on the ps2 is working I've been playing it for a while. We got some air coming out, but it's not too hot. So uh, that's questionable Let's go ahead and go back. We'll test out a ps1 game real quick Gran Turismo 2 for the ps1 is working fine I didn't really test it out th that much, but I'm not too concerned about it We're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and see what it looks like on the inside because I'm I'm very curious if they open this up and actually clean it out or if they still just uh, left the inside untouched. So actually one more thing before I open up the replacement console, I forgot I wanted to do a comparison here. So on the left side, I have the old PS3, the first one they sent me that was extremely dirty. This one is the new one. And honestly, from the outside, they don't like the new one does not look much better. Uh, it's very scratched up. It looks, I guess, dust wise, a little bit cleaner. This one is just even dusty on the outside. Um, but I forgot. I like I forgot how bad this one is. Uh, turned it on and I'm trying to compare like the sound levels and this one is blowing out dust out the side out the back but just for reference I've been playing the new one new one the replacement PS3 for like two hours on GTA 5 uh, just seeing how much it would ramp up and it's it's getting like it's, uh, the concerning part is it's not getting that hot out the vents out of the vents it's like lukewarm um, but it's the fan is like ramped all the way up like it's it's really up there But the funny thing is this one right here has been on for like just like 10 minutes installing a game and it's already pretty close Like it's it's blowing out really hot air and it's I wouldn't call it It's still like lukewarm But it's the fan is ramping up pretty quickly because obviously this thing is caked in dust And that's just kind of the difference between a, a clean console and a caked in dust console now I'm, I'm assuming this one's cleaner inside. We haven't opened it up yet. So I don't know yet All right, so one more thing. This is kind of funny literally the second I turned the camera off this one ramped up to the next fan level See these are these are actually at the same fan level now. Oh oh. Ooh, Our newer one our newer one just ramped up again. What is going on here? I'm gonna have to play some more GTA because this one the one that I've been playing for about an hour or two just ramped up again So it's going to the next level. I'm gonna play some more make sure it doesn't overheat and then we'll finally open these consoles up. So it's finally time to open this thing up. I played GTA for a couple hours, never overheated, which is a good sign. Um, but the, the bad sign is that the air it was blowing out was not that hot. So it tells me thermal paste was probably not replaced. But let's go ahead and take this thing apart and see what it looks like on the inside. So I have the top cover off now and it does look a bit dusty in here. It's not like super dusty, but it does tell me that they probably did not open this up and clean it out because like, why would there still be so much surface dust right here? I don't know it's obviously not nearly as bad as the last one thank goodness but it still just <laughs> worries me a bit that they did not actually open this one up and clean it out all right time for the big reveal here and here we go oh 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 it's my bad i didn't mess anything up let me let me unclip this real quick yeah they definitely did not open this up because it's still i mean obviously this is very nitpicky about being dusty but th the fact is that we're trying to investigate if they're actually opening consoles up and cleaning them out and like what is that dusty that means they're not again that's at least that's surface dust and not like all caked in here like the uh, like the other one was um, now this part looks good uh, I don't see really any dust in the power supply I'm gonna go ahead and open up the other console and kind of show you guys just for a comparison because I just like I can't get over how the dusty that one was all right so here on the left side is obviously the super dusty one there that one's really dusty and dirty and, and again this the the camera does not do it justice it's worse in person than it is on camera like it just does not do it justice let me go ahead and take this top cover off and show you the real surprise all right so here you go again on the left side is the dirty PSU from last time just caked with dust all over it. <laughs> this it is not even the best part. Like this is very dirty as well. The best part is like the very bottom piece is like just like a desert, as I call it. It looks like a desert. <laughs> and obviously, thermal paste was not replaced. Just just terrible. Um, again, go watch that video if you haven't. It's it's amazing. But uh, I'll put this to the side now. We'll get back to the, the one I got today. 
So I have enough screws out now to take the whole board out of the plastic and we can kind of see what's going on here. And nice, gotta love dust. Now we know for sure this will not open. There's just like, look at that down there. Wow. You know, obviously that's not terrible, but <laughs> when you call a console refurbished, it, it would be nice if you refurbished it. And, and, and here's the problem is that there's a lot of places, granted, there's a lot of places out there that call their stuff refurbished and don't actually refurbish them. But the problem with DK Audis is they're showing these videos to the whole world to see. They're like, yeah, we, we open and clean and refurbish all of our consoles. They're, you know, replacing capacitors, swapping out lasers, you know, whatever else. And they're cleaning, they're opening up all the consoles, cleaning them out on the inside and outside. And then they say that, but then they send consoles like this that are not clean at all. And like, which is like even more amazing from the fact that like they're, there's no chance they haven't seen the video of the P original PS3, and it's pretty easy to trace who bought that PS3. It made it even easier after sending that email to them, and then they still send this. All right, guys, so I wanted to butt in here real quick after making the rest of the video, because uh, I'm so mad about this. Like, let's just think about this for a second. If, if they're sending me dirty consoles, you know, me who's making unboxings, reviews on YouTube for the whole world to see, and they know it, like I, I sent them an email, it wasn't me because I'm sending it to a different address, but like, trust me, it's pretty easy to track. Like, I didn't make it that hard to see that that PS3 is the one in the video. Basically, they, they should know that it's me. And if they're sending me dirty PS3s, dirty consoles what are they sending you guys like this is their version like I, I said i told them i said please refurbish it this time they know it's going to be on video and they still send this not cleaned not refurbished they're still sending this what are they sending you guys they're not cleaning or refurbishing their consoles like they they're making these videos they're, they're trying to cover up and they're they're not cleaning or refurbishing their consoles it's just uh is it a, is this a dream like what is what is going on here just just food for thought just think about it Let's just keep going and see what it looks like. And I've already said it a few times, but I'll say it again. It, the, the camera does not do it justice. Like, uh, you know, it, it looks dirty on camera, but it's even worse in person, especially the, the other PS3. Uh, like it looks bad on camera, but in person it's like 10 times worse. Surprisingly, I don't know how, but it is. All right, so here's the fan. Again, hard to get a good look at it, but you can tell still caked in dust. I wouldn't call it caked, but just like pretty filthy. You actually are caked down here with dust. Again, you, it's harder to see on camera, but let me, let me take some photos and I'll show it on the screen. All right, now let's pull this piece off and there we go. So now we can see our thermal paste. Good stuff. It's just basically all gone. Like, <laughs> oh man. And it's like, it's just covered in dust around it. And you know, this is the worst place to have dust and dirt. You get a lot of dust and dirt, you overheat, no thermal paste, and uh, your console dies dead forever. I actually kind of want to take off this other piece now to see what it looks like under here. All right, let's go ahead and take off the silver piece. And yep, so there you go. Um, you can see all kinds of dust and dirt caked around there, caked around the thermal pads there, caked around the, the GPU and CPU, which like I said, worst place to have dust and dirt. Clearly not nearly as bad as the last one, but still it should not look like this if it's clean and refurbished. That, that right there is not good for, <laughs> for a CPU and GPU. To have that much thermal paste, it's just, it's not doing anything, not hardly doing anything. So uh, yeah, I, there you have it guys. I guess even if you ask DK Oldies to refurbish your console, they still don't. Um, they don't even fully clean it. So I don't know what to say at this point. Like I, uh, I'll let you guys decide for yourself what you think in the comments, but thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Number three. Dude, each, each console I pull out, I started to think more and more how much of a mistake this was. The Texas load. I bought this 900 pound lot of untested consoles from Goodwill and in this video we're gonna go through everything and see what they gave to us. And we got right off the bat on top we got a couple Wii Sports which is actually a good sign because those are pretty light. Both of these are like 20 bucks right there that's good to see. We're just gonna put the stuff to the side. We're straight up in a U-Haul doing this because of this ridiculousness. I mean, there's tons of stuff in here guys. It's like 360s, PS3s, Wii's I think. And the funny thing is they didn't tell us what was in here they just took a picture of the top and said here you go bid on it but we're gonna go through here and hopefully stuff works uh, i don't have a whole, a whole lot of hope but we got a 360 here a slim uh still got the warranty seal in it. it actually looks like it's in pretty nice condition then next up we have another slim warranty seal intact again in actually nice condition as well and then we got two more slims we got another matte slim warranty seal intact we got a uh, glossy slim warranty seal intact good stuff to see and oh oh well, <laughs> look what i just found guys this one says gamestop certified pre-owned on the side that's funny i don't know what year that's from but most of the consoles so far, these four consoles so far look pretty good. I'm really hoping there's all consoles in here and not just a bunch of like Wii Fit boards. That would suck. Um, we got a, what is this? Oh, we got a Jasper. Let's go. You can see the date there. We got a 120 gigabyte hard drive. Nice. Let's go, baby. All right, next up, guys, we got a 
I'm just gonna move these cords out of the way. Nobody cares about the cords. And guys, I'm not gonna even tell you how much I paid for this. Guess down below how much you think I paid for it, and I'll I'll tell you if you're right or not. But this Wii right here is disgusting. Look at that Wii. That's just just nasty. Ugh. Oh great. Now my hand is sticky. Alright guys, let's test out this random Wii console I have here. We're just gonna turn this one on. It's got a red light so far. Got power, got a blue flashing light from the disk drive. And there it is, it already booted up. And oh, there's actually an SD card in here. Dude, no way. 32 gigs? Oh, that's a solid SD card. <laughs> Dude, the funniest thing about these, or honestly, what I think is gonna be most interesting is searching through here and seeing people's like old save data and stuff. And hopefully there's not, oh. Oh, this one's got some games on it. Okay, we got Mario Kart 64. We got a Super Nintendo game, Super Mario World. That, that's solid. Okay, uh, let me see if I can get this Wii remote to work. Wait, hold up, there's Wii. Wii Sports is inside. Jackpot. Let's go. And of course, <laughs> got the Wii wheel. I mean, this is an OEM one. This is like 10 bucks right there. Got a uh, Wii remote and that thing looks pretty dang grimy. Another Wii remote. The good thing is about the Wii remotes is like they're pretty light and like the weight to price ratio ratio is not bad um, compared to like 360s and Wiis because those weight to price ratios is really bad. I can already see like a little stack of Wiis down here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them out and, and stack them up. They're all in like, they're all in okay condition, pretty beat up missing the flaps and stuff but they are they are nintendo wii's and hopefully they somewhat work and here we go guys a couple more 360s Dude, there's there's so many 360s in this lot both of these still have the actually this one does not have the warranty seal intact this one does um no hard drive i've been forgetting to check the hard drives that's the that's one thing that could make or break us here so we, if we find these 360s have hard drives inside of them and yeah we got 250 right here which by itself is like 30 bucks so that's that's cool to see and, and in case you can't tell guys we are outside it is blazing hot here in Texas, like 104 right now. And oh, look, we got an HD DVD. I love those things. They just look just like a 360, just in miniature form. All right, got some more, some more Wii's down here. Um, what I'm really hoping is we get to the bottom and we find some like really extraordinary, valuable stuff. I, I don't have a lot of hope for that, but that's you know of course the hope. Got a few more Wii's. We actually have oh what is this? <laughs> the Wii HDMI converter. That's pretty funny, dude. We have a uh, an OG Xbox. Oh my gosh. What happened to that? Uh, I'm really hoping the consoles at the bottom do not like, look like this because 900 pounds of weight is in here. So that means the consoles in the bottom have a lot of weight on them. I'm hoping they don't look like this. Uh, we're, we're about to find out. So far, most of them look decent. And dude, we got a refurbished 360 here. Look at that, refurbished. 2009, so I don't know. It's probably a Jasper as well. That's, that's nice. Oh, dude, no. Oh, we have a B01. Let's go. You see that black trim, guys? That is a B01. So we're going to go ahead and try to test out this backwards compatible PS3 and see if it works. I'm a little scared right now. This is kind of going to make or break my day right here because this is a very valuable PS3. If it is working, it's nasty, but let's go ahead and see if it turns on. I'm going to get some footage right here. I've got to flip on the back first. So three, two, one. We do have a red light. That's a good sign. I really hope it does not get the yellow light of death right here, but three, two, one. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know it was gonna happen, but that, that sucks. It does still have the warranty sticker though, so. And even better news, we have another refurbished. <laughs> what in the world? And the hard drive is peeling apart. When is this from? This is from, it says service date 2009, so it, I don't know, probably a, uh, I forgot the, the uh, motherboard name, but man, this is this is an interesting lot so far. PS3's have an X's also. And, oh no, that's not a good sign. All right guys, we have PS3's that have X's on them. Does that mean they tested them and they didn't work, so they threw them in this untested lot? That's my worry here, is that this is all crap that they just throw in a lot and called untested, but it's actually broken. That's that's my main worry. And then next up, let's go ahead and pull out this BO1. This thing is scratched like crazy. Oh my gosh, that thing looks awful. It's got the warranty. But it is a BO1 and yeah, this has a warranty seal. We have another 360 here. This one I think is also a Jasper. Man, a lot of Jaspers in here, that's good to see. All right, next up we have a PS3 Super Slim. Um, I don't think those break very often. Maybe the disc drive doesn't work because it's covered in filth, but got that, plus a few random 360 controllers, which we'll put to the side. Dude, each, each console I pull out, I started to think more and more how much of a mistake this was. Oh no, look at that console. Oh no, destroyed, what in the world? And it's from 2006, it's actually got an HDMI port. It's probably a Falcon. Oh, it's got a memory card on front. There we go, that's cool. All right, now, oh, we have a Slim, PS3 Slim. Dude, these things are filthy. These have probably been sitting in the warehouse for ages. Oh my gosh. All right, next up we have a Wii in a bag. Dude, what kind of Wii is that? Wii remote is that? Yeah, we're not even like, what is this? We're probably like a fifth of the way through this lot and there's just so much stuff still. Got another 360. This one is a, probably a Falcon. Got another Slim. I'm gonna have to like cut this box open eventually because I can't reach all the way down into here. Do have another couple games down here. We've got Tiger Woods 09. We got Sega, oh, 
Empty case. Wow, cool. One, oh man, <laughs> dude, we gotta. <laughs> we're just pulling out random stuff, and we got a wee, a box wee down here. I'll, I'll wait for that so we don't drop a bunch of stuff, more stuff down there. But another, you know, a couple more 360s. We got a Turtle Beach engineered for gaming sticker there. That's funny. Let's see if this 360 Slim works. So three, two, one. Got a green light. Cool. Does it open? A no free game, but it does open, and it's booting up. <laughs> let's, let's go, dude. We got a bunch of profiles. Let's go ahead and just try out a game and see if see if this loads up and works. Yeah, 360 Slim works. Let's go. It's it's kind of interesting how I haven't seen any Xenons yet. I thought this would have been littered littered with like Red Ring of Death Xenons. Maybe they still have Red Ring of Death. I don't know, but all these consoles are just filthy. I'm not surprised at all, but it's just ugh, nasty. Another Super Slim that is uh, basically falling apart on one side. All right, guys, we're just gonna start shoveling these out of here. Two more 360 Slims. <laughs> got a couple more 360s. One is a Slim, one is a Xenon, and we even got a Wi-Fi adapter that's worth like 20 bucks. No, it's actually, it's not worth anything because it's broken. <laughs> so many Wii's, guys. And then we have another 360 uh, HD DVD player down there. I mean, they're not worth that much, and honestly, they're probably broken, but well, this thing sold for eight bucks at one point back in 2016. We have another, <laughs> another GameStop certified pre-owned 360 down here. These, these consoles are so old. And, what in the world, man? But yeah, half these consoles are just not even unplugged. We're just like, they're still plugged in, just tossed in the back. <laughs> I'm bringing a DualShock 2 along with me. I am a little bit disappointed at how many Wii's are in here. <laughs> Can't say I'm surprised, but I would, I would rather have 360s than Wii's. And again, another, is this the same PS3? Is this a different PS3 Super Slim? It's got the same issue where it's got like half of it broken off. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, wait, wait, powered on LED lights don't work but it works <laughs> i guess i guess that's a good note hey another another jasper guys guys we're, <laughs> we are safe we've been looking for a double a battery for like two days now we are we've been traveling for a long time and had multiple things that needed to need double a batteries and could not find any and, and uh the hotel room of course another slim here and uh warranty seal intact oh my gosh look at the <laughs> look at the filth i mean like I, I really hope these are not just like infested with cockroaches they <laughs> That kind of looks like it is. And another, <laughs> another super slim. Oh man, that thing looks nasty. Gross. It's oh, looks like somebody peed on it. <laughs> Get that away from me. <laughs> what in the world? And then we got this more, more of this bag stuff. I almost wonder like maybe this stuff was sitting at a Goodwill for sale. Like that's the kind of stuff Goodwill uses. So it almost feels like they had it for sale and nobody bought it because they had it probably listed too high. All right, guys, we got a Wii in box, and I do feel something in there. So there probably is actually a Wii in there. Nice, you guys. We are. We are we are fraught, <laughs> dude. What is that, girl? <laughs> Skater girl? Got the warranty seal in tech, guys. We are frying out here. It is like 104 degrees in Texas right now. I hope you guys watch this video. I hope you guys like it. This is not good. We're getting to the bottom, and they have a handful that have an X on them, which tells me they were probably not working. Which is, in my opinion, pretty dirty to test it, say not working, and, and call it untested. Got another bundle. What is that? Oh, is that, that looks like an Amazon like dot thing. What? <laughs> so random. Another 360 warranty seal in tech. Gotta love the 360s and uh, another PS3 Slim with an X on it. All right, so we're gonna test out one of these uh, PS3 Slims that has a giant X on it. Let's go ahead and turn it on to three, two, one. All right, yeah, so this one is weird. It won't display via AV or HDMI. And also I can't even turn it off. Once it's on, it just like the button does nothing. All right, guys, so after a little hydration break and uh, just a break in general, we're back and better than ever, not really, but we got a uh, Skylanders, Giants, Empty box, cool. Um, there's still, <laughs> there's so much, so much stuff in. Oh, hold on. We have a WaveBird receiver. Oh, baby. Go ahead and take out this box Wii, though. Uh, yeah, it's definitely boxed, and there's definitely something inside. It's just a very beat up Wii box. Another little Wii bundle with a uh, memory card in there. And again, another Wii bundle that is breaking on me because there's so much junk in it. Dude, what, what kind of bundle were they selling? Like a Wii with 20 Wii jackets? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> no wonder they didn't sell it. What in the world, dude? So random. We got another PS3 Super Slim down here, though. We have a little thing that says BD right there, as in Blu-ray drive, maybe? And so my guess is maybe the Blu-ray drive does not work. Oh, yep, it's got an X on it. Dude, how, how are you gonna call these untested? And you've got stuff in here with giant X's on them, like they're clearly tested and had issues. That's, that's some BS right there. But we'll, we'll try it out. So three, two, one, hit that power button, hit the eject. And uh, I see the disc, the uh, laser doing something. Let's go ahead and put a disc in here. And I do see, s oh, I see a picture on screen, but it's like just, oh wait, there it is. Is that just me or do I see like static all over the screen? Oh wait, did it go away? That was odd. And the disc drive works fine. All right, another PS3 here. Luckily this one does not have a giant X, so maybe it does work. And again, it's just filthy, dude. How long have these been sitting in their warehouse? Now we're getting somewhere. We got games down here. Yep, just a bunch of random sports titles that are worth nothing. We've got The Sound of Music. <laughs> what? Guys, we got another stack of four Wii's. We have 
if I had to guess, probably 25 Wii's so far. Oh, Wii Sport. Oh, no. Wait. Maybe there is the disc in there? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's go. No, no. <laughs> Dude, they did me dirty with that. Of course, another 360. This one's kind of smashed up, and it's 2008, so probably a Falcon. All right, we got another 360 Slim here covered in filth. Got another DualShock 3. This one might work. It looks filthy, but it might work. And then we also have a camo. Hey, that one actually looks not bad for how far down this was in the pile. All right, guys, another PS3 Slim. Another 360 slim, 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 slimly slim. All right, two more Wii's guys. I mean, it's just like Wii's galore here. And we're still going down. We got another 360. This one is a jet, it even has a Jasper sticker on it. That's funny. All right, guys, so we've been slowly pulling everything out. We're, we seriously might be close to heat exhaustion, so we're gonna push through till the end. Uh, but we do still have some box consoles down here, which is cool, like a box 360, a DJ Hero, another Wii, another Wii. There's clearly a blue Wii down here, which I think is worth a little bit more. And just by the way, we've been pulling out tons of accessories that have not been shown on camera because there's just way too many to show. But the uh, funny part is we have another <laughs> another PS3 with an X. This one says bad disc. So, <laughs> dude, untested my butt. <laughs> nice, face boy just fell straight off. We got a couple more elites. There's another, there's another Jasper, man. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this Jasper 360 and just see if it turns on. Three, two, one. Okay, yeah, sounds like a Jasper. <laughs> this drive is stuck. Nice, dude. <laughs> It is booting up though. Okay, okay. I just want to try to get it open once. There it goes. <laughs> okay, I got it open. Uh, I would not recommend slapping your 360 like that. Very, oh, no, 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 no. Yes, it's reading. Okay, so this this console, a stuck disk drive on a 360 is pretty easy to fix. I'm not too concerned about that. That's actually a really nice console. You know, guys, I can see the bottom. We're getting close. I can see the cardboard at the bottom. We got a PS3 or a 360 Slim here. Two more 360 Slims. <laughs> Look at this, this battery is wedged into the 360 Slim. And wait, hold on, it's from Target and it has a service plan sticker on it. That's actually pretty funny. Uh, the good thing is this thing was on the bottom and like it's not smashed up too terribly. I mean, honestly, I thought we would get some on the bottom that were just completely destroyed. Oh, wait, hold on, what is this? A piano for the 360, <laughs> what is that? Of course, we have some more Wii games down here. Nothing valuable down here. Um, I might just like try to spread out the stuff on the bottom so we can see the last few things and then call it quits because this is uh, getting a bit excessive. We got another Wii. And yeah, we, so we got another 360 over here which is basically mutilated. PSA super slim down here. Oh wait, hold on. Dude, we have a Wii bag. That's actually pretty sick. And it probably has a Wii inside. It does. Nice. But guys, I think you can see most of the rest down here. And uh, this is going to be a long series of videos. Oh, <laughs> dude. Black Ops, let's go. Yeah, I think we have a couple, few more Wii's over there, just some various sports games that we. Um, I, I am pretty hopeful though that we have a pretty solid number of working consoles or things that just need a little bit of work. We'll throw up the number on the screen of how many consoles we count here, but this is gonna be a long series of videos. And this, this series is gonna extend like, I don't know, 15 videos, it's gonna be crazy. But guys, make sure to stay tuned, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next time. If we live. <sighs> yeah, if <laughs> we might not make it out of here. I'm like, honestly, destroyed right now and it's like 105 out. <sighs> Number two. I bought this brand new OG Xbox 360 from eBay for about $400. And in this video, we're gonna unbox it, test it out, and hope we don't get the red ring of death. Now this video is part of the Texas load series where I bought 120 untested video game consoles from Goodwill and I'm using the profit from testing and fixing those consoles to buy cool Xbox 360 consoles. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what's inside. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Here it is. So it is an OG Xbox 360. It's before they even told you how much memory it came with. So I think it comes with 20 gigabytes of storage. And we got this bonus meteor remote, apparently. I love how on the old consoles, they used to advertise all of their just random accessories and then whatever games they have. So these are, I think those are all launch games or at least pretty close to it. Let's go ahead and do the dirty here. Oof, there goes the value. Oh baby, there it is. We've got, our OG Xbox 360. Yeah, we still got like that. You got that yellow foam that's down there. Classic stuff there, man. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at when this console was manufactured because that's what I'm most interested in. I'm gonna go ahead and guess. I'm gonna say, well, <laughs> now I can already see on my monitor that it's not got an HDMI port. So I'm gonna guess March 2006. Let's see. Um, it's, no, Wow, November 22nd, 2005. Hold on, dude, is this like straight up OG, is this a launch console? <laughs> this, we might open this thing up and it might have Red Ring of Death. Wow, yeah, it, the Xbox 360 was released on November 22nd, 2005. 
And that is, that is the manufacture date of this console. Wow, that is, that's amazing. This thing wasn't in stores. If it was manufactured on 1122, it, doesn't, it means it wasn't actually sold in stores on 1122, but it's shortly after. But I think it's even cooler that it was actually manufactured on launch. So if you get a 360 that has the launch date on it, I think that's just awesome. And just by the way, guys, after we do this unboxing and test it out and stuff, we're also going to uh, go ahead and test and fix a few of the Texas Load 360s that we have. Uh, I still have a ton left, but we're gonna go ahead and do those in this video. We'll get into that later. But of course we got our, our volume one setup, volume two warranty. I don't know why I always liked these little, little baggies here though, of course, just straight up sealed. I did not realize they came with a sticker. Hey, that's pretty neat. Put that on your car. <laughs> Congratulations on owning the most exciting product on the planet. Act now to protect your investment in the amazing 360. That's <laughs> that's funny. I love that design. Oh man, it's just so nostalgic. I never actually, uh, when I bought my 360, it was already in like the, it was 2009. So we were already in the Jasper days. So I never bought like an OG Xbox 360, but hoo -hoo, there it is. There's our free remote, bonus remote, I guess they called it. And then of course we got our controller, which is not, uh, it's wireless, nice. We've got our headsets. We've got our AV cable down there. And we got, of course, our power cord in here, which uh, will be the 203 watt. And honestly, you can see it down there, guys. I'm gonna leave it in there because I have so many other power breaks I can use. I'm gonna pr preserve as much of this console as I can because I just like, why not? This remote right here is awesome though. Man, look how white that is. I've seen these, I've seen these in the past. And they're always, they're always dirty, yellow, whatever. This thing is like pristine, straight up white. Hey, that's the cleanest Xbox 360 headset I've ever seen. These things get grimy quick because it's just like such a, such a cheap foam here. But dude, this controller, whoo, I can, I can feel how clean these joysticks are through the bag. And just look in, listen to the, the RB and LB. So nice. I'm not gonna open it up. I wanna leave that as is. Of course, we got our batteries in there too. Energizer batteries, got the high quality batteries. Nice, but let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and pull this console out of the little baggie and see what this looks like. All right, so first up inside of there, we got the setup pamphlet there and it's like themed like the blades. Of course, you got a little uh, plastic film piece on top of the disc drive um, and also in front of the IR sensor. Man, let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in and hopefully, hopefully it works. So this console is plugged in, ready to go. And by the way, these three consoles over here are the ones from the Texas Load that we're gonna test out later in this video. And let's go ahead and see if this console boots up. I'm gonna go ahead and film it because I got a feeling this might have red ring. Like there's a, there's a decent, there's like a 50-50 chance, honestly. So let's go ahead and try to boot this bad boy up. I really, okay. Three, two, one. Oh baby, here we go. There it is, there's the boot up screen. I can hear the fan like almost rattling, strange. No. There's no way. Oh my gosh. There is no way I just got red ringed. E60, I don't even remember what E67, oh my gosh. I just got like the ultimate fake out because this thing was booting up for a good 20 seconds before it gave me this error. Oh my gosh, what is, <laughs> oh wait, this is just a hard drive error. I, I definitely did hear some weird stuff going on in here, so maybe it's just a bad hard drive. Let me let me pull the hard drive off of here. It sounded like a, a fan hitting something, and it, it, so maybe it was the hard drive that was making that noise, and it's just a, it's a bad hard drive. Okay, okay, maybe maybe that's the issue. I, I hope so. It seems like it is because it booted up. It, it was booting up to the main screen, and then yeah, that's definitely gonna be a hard drive issue because I do not hear the little rattling noise anymore. So it was probably the yes, there it is. Let's just continue without a without a hard drive for now. And dude, this is this is so awesome seeing the. The Blades dashboard here for the first time. This is like this is like back in November, December 2005. You're booting this up for the first time, and I've never had this feeling because I'd never bought the 360 back in the 05, 06. Bought mine in 09. But we got family settings, we got high definition settings, and we got Xbox dashboard. Nice. And dude, this is my favorite part right here. How they got the open tray like built in, and it looks like the tray. So nice. But uh, here we go. Oh yeah, Xbox Live games, media, and system. And I'm trying to remember. There's one more tab that they actually did not add until later on, until a later update, I think. Dude, I'm curious, what, are we on like 1.0 dashboard? Like, what is this? 2.01888. Let me just look this up and see if this is the like very OG dashboard, if there's anything uh, before this. Yeah, so this dashboard version is the original one it shipped with. We got create gamer profile, I got Xbox Live Arcade, demos, trailer. I wonder if there's any demos already downloaded. Honestly, if this hard drive works, I bet there's some demos already on there. Um, but let's go ahead and, yeah, let me turn this back off 
and try to put the hard drive on and see if we can get this hard drive to work. That's wild. It, it is amazing that how many hard drives I've been through on the 360 and tested out. And this is the first one I've ever seen that was bad. And it was straight from factory, just amazing. So I actually found another OG Xbox 360 hard drive just sitting in the Texas load, which is basically the entire uh, palette of video games that I bought from Texas recently for this series. And uh, you know what I noticed here is this thing was never actually removed here. So, wow. Nice. Looks a whole lot more pristine now. But we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Hopefully it works and hopefully it does not make me update to a newer dashboard. We're taking a little bit of a risk here, but I think we'll be okay. Um, but let's, let's try it out. So now this console is, it's been booting up for like 20 seconds and still, wow. So is this a, what in the world? Is this a connection issue between the hard drive and the motherboard? <laughs> what a random issue. What in the world, dude? Well, you know what? We're going to go ahead and start testing these other Xbox 360 consoles I have here. And I want to stick the uh, the hard drives on a different console and see if the console is the issue <laughs> now in case you didn't notice this one is uh basically destroyed on the side <laughs> so we'll, we'll try to stick a hard drive on here it might be a little bit difficult all right hard drive attached let's go ahead and turn this console on i won't be surprised if this console doesn't work because i mean you see half of it's just it it's clearly been dropped but it, <laughs> it is booting up and i see the screen coming on let me see if uh will this drive eject though wow <laughs> free game called blow what what is this what <laughs> You can't make this up, man. What in the world is going on here? I, I actually cannot believe this, this disk drive opened up. Um, but I think we have another, I think this hard drive just is bad because it's not booting. Yeah, we got a, now it's an E68 error. What, what in the world? What? <laughs> yeah, so from my quick Google search, it appears to be the same thing where it's a hard drive issue. Um, so it almost seems like to me, uh, let me just try this other hard drive. <laughs> so this one, so this hard drive is the one from the Texas load, not the brand new one. Let's go ahead and stick this on and see if it does the same thing here. What are the chances I just found two bad hard drives in a row? Like uh, that would be wild, but I guess that's a possibility. What is going on in this video? This is unreal. How did I come across two bad hard drives in a row? And I've never seen a bad hard drive in my life on a 360. And I've, I've you know, tested like 50 to 100 different hard drives and never seen a bad one until all of a sudden I got two in a row that are bad. This is, what is going on? All right, let's try another hard drive now. All right, got another hard drive here. This one is also an OG Xbox 360 hard drive from the Texas load. And it says refurbished on it. I don't know what was refurbished about this hard drive. Um, but let's go ahead and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it on the brand new 360 first and we'll see what happens. All right, so it's booting up and this is the first, first hard drive that isn't making weird noises. We got two bad hard drives in a row and this one, yeah, it's working straight up on the Blades dashboard. We got this old hard drive. Uh, we got 10 profiles on here. Again, this is just an untested one from, um, oh, actually this is, this is, I've seen this one before. I pulled this hard drive off of another console that I had from like, I think a video a couple weeks ago. We got Wingnut 1419, Killer Panda, and I Am The Riot. <laughs> this is, this is so funny. I, I love the, uh, the Blades aesthetic where it pulls out the, the thing on the side instead of a little pop up in the middle. And dude, there it is, yeah. I am the riot. Let's see if we got any dem demos on here. Maybe. Uh, yeah, nothing here. Wow, that there's actually heat coming out of this console. So that's telling me the thermal paste is actually doing something, which is amazing considering this thing is almost 20 years old and it's sitting in a box for 20 years. W what in the world? And my guess from the eBay listing, it said that this came from a an, electron an electronic seller that shut down. So my guess is this 360 might be from Circuit City, which would be an even bigger bonus. Of course, we don't have a receipt or anything. Now I do want to see if the tray opens. I haven't taken off the plastic piece yet, but I think it'll open with the plastic piece still on. Wait, wait, there it goes, there it goes. It's trying to open because yeah, the little plastic piece is actually still stuck on it. Oh, actually that, that plastic film there is really strong. I guess I'll just give you the guys this little satisfaction peeling off here. And actually this is, dude, it's leaving behind a bunch of residue. No way, dude. What in the world, man? I guess it's been sitting there so long that it's like, it doesn't peel off as easy anymore. We left it behind a bunch of residue. Just 20 year old console things. All right guys, so Call of Duty 2 came in. It is a very beat up game, kind of from Amazon, but we're gonna go ahead and put it in. And this should work because it's a launch game. Uh, well, let's see. Hey, there it goes. That is, wow, that is a loud disc drive. Not surprised, but <laughs> it is loud. All right, yeah, so it booted up. I, these Call of Duty games, I swear, they boot up so quickly. One last thing I wanna do here is create a new profile and get the experience of creating a new profile on the Blades dashboard, because I've, I've never done that before. So I'm putting in my profile, I'm going like full 360 gamer tag, just, just take a look. But man, that skull photo is just like an absolute 360 classic. But let's go ahead and move on to the next 360, the one we briefly tested earlier. Let's go ahead and move on, test that one out fully, uh, see if it works and see if there's anything interesting on it. And by the way, I didn't show you, but this is a Jasper console. Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't believe how smashed this thing is, but let's go ahead and turn it on again. And hopefully it boots up all the way this time. Hey, there it is. We got J, <laughs> J Smash 72 and that's it. <laughs> See if he's got anything interesting. Uh, doesn't look like it. No avatar last played in never because it was always offline. We got Madden NFL 25, which is like 2015. So this console was maybe played about 
uh, I don't know, eight to 10 years ago probably. Let's go ahead and put uh, MW2 in here and see if it works. And dude, what do you know? <laughs> MW2 is working without a problem at all. And it does still have the warranty sticker, sticker here, so this console has not been opened up. Well, not been intentionally opened up, but console works. I'll throw the profit number on the screen. Again, we're kind of getting back into the Texas load part now where we uh, test and fix the consoles and then I'll sell them on my website down below. This one won't sell for too much because it's so smashed up, but it, it does work. So go ahead and grab this down below if you want it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next console. So next up, we'll test this matte slim. And this thing actually does not look too bad. Like all the matte slims look pretty nice because they're not glossy. It is very dusty, but looking on the back, we do still have the warranty seal intact, and this is from 2012. I need to learn my slim motherboards. It's either Corona or a Trinity, and I don't remember which is which. I'll look it up. Um, I really just need to familiar familiarize myself with the slim motherboards. But let's go ahead and plug this in, see if it works. All right, so three, two, one. Got life, and let's go ahead and test out this disk drive. See, we've got a free game. Come on, come on. <laughs> Dude, how many how many people leave games in their consoles? It's just like unbelievable. This game looks pretty nice too. We got a few smudges here and there, but. Nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and connect up our controller and <laughs> see if there's any save data on this thing. I believe this should have four gigs uh, built into the storage. Let's go ahead. Oh, nope. It's one of the ones where it came with some storage, so it has no built-in storage. Why is it? This thing is so quiet. But, <laughs> but yeah, so no storage here, uh, which is unfortunate. That the really my issue with not seeing storage on these things is because you can't see any of the past history. Like it's just a, it's basically a blank canvas for an Xbox 360, which is how you want it when you buy it just to play it. But when you're buying it to like explore and kind of get a little background on who played this and make up a little bit of a story here, um, it just makes it so that it's not not quite as interesting when you don't have a profile to look at that sort of thing. But the console is working great. I'll go ahead and throw the profit number on the screen. Check it out down below if you want to buy it. And let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up, we have another console that was uh, probably dropped. I mean, there's just a, a massive gash here in the top and kind of smashed up on the sides. I'll be surprised if this hard drive works. But I mean, other than the that top piece right there, this one doesn't look too terrible. You can hear a bunch of stuff rattling around inside. This is from 2008. It appears to be a Jasper motherboard. So uh, this is like one of the OG Jaspers. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see if it works. And man, it's, it's crazy how many Jaspers I found in this 900 pound pallet. Now this one, for how much it's smashed up, I'll be surprised if it works fully, but we'll test it out. Three, two, one, got a green light. Let's go ahead and see if we got a free game here. Nope, no free game, but the <laughs> disk drive works with no issue at all. It is booting up. It's seriously like ridiculous how bulletproof these Jaspers were. And we got Alter Sophie and Mama. All right, Sophia, dude, Sophia has zero gamer score. At least Mama played a little bit. She got 100, how do you get 139 gamer score? Hold on. To my recollection, whenever you see like when you ever get a cheap, I guess let's just check out her profile and see what achievement she got that was worth like nine gamer score. Like what? That that is news to me that you could get an odd number like that. Cloning Clutch is 59, 15, 14, 8, and 12. This is like new to me. I, I didn't even know they had gamer scores other than 10, 15, 20, 25. That is that's so strange to me. What in the world? Sorry, just going down a tangent there. That was so random. But what what games did this did Mama even play? Rock Band 3, Halo Reach. So. Limbo, we're like all over the place here. Never played online, I guess, because it says offline for all of them. Hey, hold on, actually, I'm sorry, I missed the beginning. It says 2014. So this console was played about seven years ago. Toy Box Turbos, what? What is that? I gotta click on that. What is that? Oh, it's a, it's a racing game. <laughs> what in the world? I mean, I guess that makes sense when you said turbos. And family settings are not turned on. That's good to see. Let's go ahead and open this disk drive up and see if a game works. We'll try out Block, Black Ops. So that's the, that's the free game we got in the last console. And here we are, this <laughs> game read up no issue at all immediately. Another working console. We're kind of on a roll here, so I want to test out a few Wii consoles next, also from the Texas Slow, just untested Wiis. Uh, all three of them are, wow, this one is <laughs> really bad. I don't know what happened to this one, uh, but just like destroyed, uh, but most likely working, maybe a disk drive issue. But let's go ahead and start. Oh, this one has a note that says, untested Wii, like I didn't already know that. Well, let's go ahead and start with this one right here. We'll plug it in, test it out, see if it works, and see if there's some free games in them. All right, let's turn this one on. Three, two, one. Got a green light. This drive sounds good, but I don't, there's no free game in there. Uh, no SD card as well. And looks like you're pretty typical Wii. You've got all the classic channels on here. Check me out channel. Everybody votes channel. All my favorites. Uh, let's go ahead and see if there's some interesting stuff saved on here. Come on, man. Another lame Wii. We got four Miis on here. It looks like a family of four that just played like Played their Wii five times and quit. I, I don't know, man. Let's go back to the main menu and see when this thing was last played. Okay, so this is weird. I'm in March 2016, and I have a note that this person made their debut in Wii Sports, but there's no evidence of playing. Like, there's no timer here. Maybe there's some. Maybe that's a common thing. I don't know. I've never seen that before. But uh, we'll we'll call it March 2016, the last time this thing was played, which is actually 
fairly recent in terms of the Wii. And next we'll test out this random copy of NBA Live 09 I have. Make sure it reads games. So yeah, surprise, surprise, game is loading up and working. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next console. Next up, we'll test out this really dirty Wii. Do we have an SD card? Ooh, we got an SD card. Hey, so it's got two gigs, plenty for a Wii. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what's on it. All right, three, two, one. Ooh, the buttons are sticky. Ooh, there's a game inside. I heard the click. Let me eject it. Come on, good. <laughs> Dude, another, another copy of Wii Sports. You've got to be kidding me. Like, <laughs> this is like my, what, like 10th copy of Wii Sports I've gotten in this lot so far. Uh, again, I'm not too surprised, but it's just, it's crazy to see. Let's go ahead and see what's on this SD card. Probably, maybe some photos. Let's check it out. Oh wow, 732 photos. Oh, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's see what's on here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, I'm, I, I can't show you what was on that card because, like, I've seen some interesting things, things on these cards. Usually it's, like, a kid's photos. He's, like, got his first camera and is, like, taking just random photos, whatever, nothing crazy. Um, this one had, uh, I'll just say... It's cold! That's by far the the worst one I've seen on the... <laughs> just like, I don't know what to say. I'm not surprised. I got this. I got almost 50 Wii's in this lot. I'm not surprised this was on one of the consoles, but like... <laughs> okay, uh, let's see what kind of Mii's are on here. Yeah, this person definitely did not use their Wii to play games. There's three Mii's on here. Did they, did they just use their Wii to store those photos? Like, <laughs> it's just amazing they stored those photos on here and just like forgot to remove the SD card before they got rid of the console. Like... Ooh, I don't know if I want to touch this console now. Like, where has this thing been? Well, in other news, the uh, disk drive is not working. Might be because of the disk, though, because the disk is destroyed. Almost. I'm not to say destroyed, but it's very scratched up. Let's try NBA Live 09 and see if that works. Okay, yeah, so <laughs> it was just the disk because it's reading up NBA Live 09 now. You can see this thing is scratched up like crazy. I'll put it in my, in my uh, resurfacing machine and see if it fixes it up because, like, I don't see any super deep. I mean, a few of those are pretty deep, but... I don't know, we'll try to resurface it and see if that fixes it. But if the console's working otherwise, uh, this 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 whole lot, this whole video is something else. Like the ridiculous things that I've seen and happened, things that have happened in this video, just, uh, I don't even know what to say, but let's try, we got one more Wii to try. Uh, let's see if it works. No SD card in this one, let's go ahead and turn it on. And no free game either. Man. And hey, we got Wii Fit Plus channel on here. Oh, that's a new one. I mean, I've seen it before, but you don't see that very often. And then Hulu Plus is hidden at the very end of the channels. Why? Oh, and this one's got a few, few uh, me's here. We got. Ooh, what is that one in the middle? All right, so you got Squidward here. We've got Vampy. Oh, what is that name? Mom. Nice. So all pretty normal stuff except for Squidward. That was pretty funny. Uh, let's go ahead and see if the game works on this thing, though. So actually, first I wanted to boot up the the uh, Wii Fitness channel, and it feels wrong because, like, okay, so some of them have locks on them, so you have to have a, have a passcode to see, like, your weight and stuff. We'll try out Home Dog. <laughs> let's hear the last recorded. This is your 5,000th day. What in the world? Let's see what's recorded on here. What? <laughs> Home dog's goal weight is 84 pounds. It's definitely a kid. Actually, the funny thing is, this is a kid like back in, what did it say? I think I saw like, uh, who knows what date it was, but it's probably a kid back in like 2010. So this kid is not a kid anymore. Definitely like in a full on adult with a, you know, full time nine to five. There we go, January 2011. Wii Sports Resort played. <laughs> it always amazes me when these these games are played for like three hours one day and then just never played again. Like I guess they're trying to get their fill before they sell it or get rid of it, but I don't know. You never know when your last day is playing one of these consoles. Uh, crazy to think about. But this console, actually, I didn't even test the game yet. Hold on. Oh yeah, there it is. Uh, I'm not gonna boot it all the way up, but it looks like it's working. Uh, so this console is working as well. But guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, there's so much just ridiculous stuff happened in this video. I, I can't believe those. I thought those photos were gonna happen at some point in this journey, but. Uh, still kind of wild to see it, but thanks for watching guys and of course we'll take all the profit from this video Add it to the rest of our profit and we're gonna save some money and keep buying some cool limited edition consoles Let me know down below what you want to see next, uh, but thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time Number one I bought a refurbished backwards compatible PS3 from DK Oldies for $400 and in this video We're gonna take an in-depth look at this console see if it's worth the money and determine if you guys should buy one for yourself Now let's go ahead and open this box up So the the first thing I noticed is this box is actually bulging a little bit uh, not a big deal if there's bubble wrap, but uh, we're, we're about to see what's inside of here. All right, so here's the packing slip, and uh, we got a bunch of stickers and stuff on here. I'm not sure what that means, but as you can see, cosmetically flawed, 80 gig, reverse compatible. I, again, I don't know why they call it reverse compatible. We got a bunch of random... No way. Not again. Not, no, no. <sighs> Another third-party controller. I, I mean, guys, $400 for a backwards compatible PS3, cosmetically flawed, and you give me a third-party controller. I, there wasn't even an option to upgrade to an OEM. That's just, 
I don't know. I feel like that's inexcusable. So guys, I wanted to take a brief moment to look at the listing and kind of show you why I'm disappointed. So we'll get back to this stuff in a second, but let me scroll down to the description. So as you can see, it says it comes with a console, one compatible wireless controller, and that's kind of where we go wrong here. Uh, compatible is a very, very generic term. So you don't know if you're getting a DualShock 3 or if you're getting something else. Now, I, I think they either need to say third party controller here um, or give you the option to upgrade, something like that. But like the pictures show a DualShock 3, there's no option to choose between a DualShock 3 and a third party controller. They just say compatible, uh, kind of make you think you're going to get a good controller. And then they send you, you know, that uh, the, the double shock 3 that I got. All right. And we also got a power cord. Actually, that's a USB cord. We have our HDMI cable here. We should have our power cord here. We do. And then this is our game. Nice and bubble wrapped. Well, it's actually amazing. The uh, the game is bubble wrapped more than the console. All right. So here's the game. Final Fantasy. Uh, what is that? 13. Let's check out the condition of the disc. Disc looks good. And let's put that to the side. And here's the console. It does have bubble wrap only a little bit on the sides, but as long as it arrives in good condition. All right, so here is whatever you want to call this. We got the system game startup, throw that away. And man, this console does not look very good. Let's go ahead and take it out and take a closer look at it. All right, guys, so here's the console closer up and sorry about the big white thing right there. That's my light. It's kind of just reflecting the console. And as you can see, this console is very, very beat up. Now it is cosmetically flawed, but this thing is just like it's so scratched. I've never actually seen one this bad. And the thing that kind of concerns me about being cosmetically flawed is that they might use that as an excuse not to clean the console all the way. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but just taking a glance at it, I do see a bunch of dust and you can kind of see some fingerprints down there. Uh, I'll show some pictures on the screen, but fingerprints, I see dust, uh, a lot of dust down here, a lot of dust in there. I also see a bunch of dust right here on the front lip. And guys, this is a used console, so I don't expect it to be perfect, but it should be very clean uh, considering the price I've paid. Here on this side, we do have a warranty sticker from TK Oldies in place of the old warranty seal. I don't, I don't know that they can actually enforce that these days, but um, oh, and there's our cosmetic flaw. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, cool. Uh, here on the back, as you can see, the model number is CECH E01, which is good to see because that is the 80 gig backwards compatible model, which uh, uses emulation for uh, playing PS2 and PS1 games instead of real hardware like the AO1 does. But yeah, this whole console is just very scratched up, dirty. Um, well, I can't say it's too dirty yet, but it's it's very, very scratched up and kind of dusty. I don't know, man, looking closer at this thing, I actually do see a lot of dust and grain here on the bottom. So I don't know if they actually cleaned the outside or not. <laughs> oh, guys. All right, so I was about to plug it in, but I decided to open up the hard drive cover right here. And guys, take a look at that. I'll, I'll zoom in there for you, but that thing is just encroached with dust and dirt like oof all right yeah look at that like i can just wipe my finger across it nice that looks like it's been sitting in a basement or something it at least doesn't smell like cigarette dust which is a, a good thing but i don't know guys we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna plug this thing in and see if it works all right guys we got everything plugged in now and i don't think i mentioned it yet but they actually called this console reverse compatible instead of backwards compatible i'm not sure why i've never heard that terminology used before so i wanted to come back over here to the listing again and show you a few more things now first of all like I just mentioned, they call it reverse compatible. Not sure why, but that's what they call it. Uh, and I bought a cosmetically flawed system, which was $405. You can also get a good condition, which is $540, just really high prices. That's why I'm so disappointed by the controller. And then one other thing, despite the fact that I chose a cosmetically flawed system, if you go down here in the description, it still says it's fully refurbished, cleaned, and tested. So I would expect this thing to be cleaned inside, outside, and uh, new thermal paste, all that good stuff that comes with refurbishing. So uh, we'll see what they do to it. And also... This controller is terrible. Like, it, it is very bad. They call it a Double Shock 3, made by old school. It just feels really bad in the hands. This is an actual Dual Shock 3. Very nice controller. So that's pretty disappointing. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on though and see if it works. So first we gotta flip on the switch on the back. We got a red light there. Hit the power button and we have life. No disc in there. Uh, so we'll see if it boots up now. All right guys, so I'm finally booted up to the main screen and this console is going crazy. The fan is blowing real loud. And I already know it's not been cleaned inside because I see a bunch of dust blowing out the sides and the back. And man, that, that air is hot. But we're going to go ahead and test this thing out, make sure it works. First of all, actually, I want to go to the settings, system settings, and see what uh, software version we're on. All right, so system information. We are on 4.85, which I think might be the most recent one. Uh, not sure, but I know it's not old. All right, no game in there. We're going to start with the PS1 game because this is backwards compatible. So it's compatible with most PS1 and most PS2 games. I don't think quite all of them, so hopefully this works. And it's probably gonna ask me to create, there we go, all right, cool. PlayStation format disc, ask me to create a memory card. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll boot it up. So we're playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night on PS1. Never actually played this game, so I have no idea what I'm doing. 
Your words are as empty as your soul. Dude, we're like straight into the boss fight on this one. You like walk up the stairs and it's like, all right, time for the final boss fight. Whole game is 30 minutes long. <laughs> Not really, but we've played enough. I think it's working. Let's go back to the main menu. And we're gonna try out a PS2 game. And I have Silent Hill 2 here today. We're going with the high value games today, because why not? Hopefully the console works and doesn't eat our games, but so far so good. Let's take out the PS1 game and put in Silent Hill 2 for the PS2, and we'll make sure that works. And I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of dust blowing out the sides and the back, but what I didn't say is that it kind of smells like grandma's basement. Like that's the only way for me to describe it. Kind of smells old, like dusty, I don't know. And, and, and honestly, that's probably what happened is grandma probably saw a Facebook ad that she could sell her PS3 to DK Oldies for some money. And so she probably did that. And that's how DK Oldies got this. I guess they didn't clean it, send it off to me. And this thing is, this thing is going crazy. Like the fan is pretty crazy. We're not even on a PS3 game yet. So uh, I'm curious to see what will happen. And honestly, I'm not sure if this controller even works on PS2 games because it, it won't let me control the screen with a PS2 game. Now let me try my official DualShock 3 and see if that works. So upon some more trial and error with the third party controller uh, and also searching online, apparently third party controllers do not work with the PS3 and PS2 games, which is just awesome to see. I guess let me know down below if you have any more info on that. But from what I saw online, it was some sort of pri piracy measure that you couldn't plug in uh, third party Bluetooth devices to the USB port and, and use them on PS2 games. Uh, so that's just just awesome to see. So I bought this backwards compatible PS3. Can't even play PS2 games though because the third party controller does not work on them. So that's just just great. But when I have my DualShock 3 plugged in, uh, working just fine, no problems there. Let's go back to the main screen. And of course, we'll try to PS3 game now. All right, so we got Final Fantasy. Let's go ahead and put it in and see if it boots up. All right, so playing some Final Fantasy, having no issues so far. Uh, so all is good on PS1, PS2, and PS3 games, except for the fact that the controller they send me does not work with PS2 games. So that's a bit disappointing. Now, obviously I have not used this for an extended period of time. I imagine that once you use this for a few hours, you're, it's really gonna ramp up. I mean, if you know these old PS3s, they, they get really loud, like a jet engine, blow blow air like crazy, because they have to, it gets so hot inside. Now, a way you can kind of help combat that is to replace the thermal paste and clean out the insides. I'm not sure if they did that or not. We're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at the insides and see what it looks like, see if they're refurbished or anything. So let's go ahead and take this console apart. Now, first thing you'll see on this side, you got your DK Oldies warranty sticker. We're gonna take that off, take this little uh, little piece off, and then we'll slide the cover off and then take a bunch of screws out. All right, guys, so I took the uh, top cover off, and as you can see, a bunch of dust in here. Uh, yeah, there you go, that's a better view. But you can see all that dust in there. I can just run my finger across it and pick up a bunch of dust. And then, even worse, I took out the hard drive, and guys, look at that. That is just bad. There's there's dust flying all around my room now. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see that side. Terrible. And let me, let me just show you inside of the hard drive bay. All right, yeah, so just looking inside of that, you can see dust just hanging out in that hard drive bay. Just awesome to see. Uh, let's go ahead and take the rest of the cover off, see what it looks like on the inside. I don't have much hope for the inside of this thing, but we'll see what it looks like. All right, guys, time for the big reveal. I got all the screws off on the top. Let's go ahead and pull this cover all the way off and see what it looks like inside. Oh, man. Oh, no way. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I have no words. It, it, it actually looks better on camera than in person. Like in person, every single inch of this is covered in dirt and dust. And just look at that. Absolutely filthy. Oh my goodness. This is like, this is, this is GameStop level. This is worse than GameStop. Like this is bad. Really, really bad. I'm going to take some pictures and show it on the screen so you guys can get a better, better look at this. But like every inch of this is just covered in dirt. And this is called refurbished. Refurbished, guys. Refurbished. What, what are we doing here? Why am I paying double market price for a console that is this dirty? I mean, you can buy a console just like this under 200 bucks on eBay, uh, probably even less with this for this condition. This is just, this is sad. Like why would they put a warranty seal on this console when they never opened it up? I mean, that, I'm, I'm disappointed. This is, this is bad. I, I don't know what else to say. And man, I, I think we've seen enough here, but honestly, I, I want to see what the rest of the console looks like. I want to see what the fan looks like. I want to see what the thermal paste looks like. It's just, it's not going to be good. So let's keep going. All right. So I think I got all the screws out and we're going to see if we can pull this all the way out to see what the heat sink looks like. All right, here we go. And the big reveal. Oh man. Whew. That, that is amazing. Oh yeah. All over my fingers, man. DK always really outdid themselves this time. This is wow. Yeah. This bottom piece is even wow. <laughs> it looks like a desert. <laughs> What am I, what are we doing here? This is, this was $400 guys. What, I, I could pay 50 bucks for this. Like what, what is, I, I just, uh, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know. 
this this one's going back to DK Oldies. I, I usually feel bad sending stuff back to companies after I buy it, but if they're gonna send me this for four hundred dollars, I'm sending it back. So this is this is unacceptable. All right, and there's the fan. Hoo hoo. Fan actually looks a little bit better than I thought it would, even though it's disgusting. That's better than I thought it would be after seeing everything else. All right, we're not we're not down to the heat sink yet. We're not down to the thermal paste yet. But let's let's get there. Oh, what do you know? The board is not quite as bad. <laughs> Funny I'm saying that because that's still really really bad. Like, oof. got everything apart now, and I think the thermal paste we should be able to see it now. And oh yeah, pretty much nothing left. That's what we like to see. I just like I'm baffled by this. That the fact that they would sell this as cleaned, refurbished, but they had refurbished absolutely nothing. And I, I I I don't know. I have nothing else to say. I don't. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this is no doubt one of the top two dirtiest PS3s I've ever seen. I think I saw one with cockroaches one time, so that one was worse. But this is next level like there is so much dust in here no thermal paste replaced like the outside looks bad but it's the inside it's just whew. and they specifically say on the listing they say tested cleaned and refurbished so clean and refurbished are two different things they did not refurbish anything here did not clean anything here so i guess they tested it i i don't know but yeah guys i can't believe i paid 400 dollars for this just covered in dirt and dust no thermal paste replaced but thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time so guys, I hope you enjoyed my top 10 videos of the year. Again, let me know down below if you agree with me. And if you made it this far, leave a comment down below and use the phrase banana milkshake in it so I know you made it to the end of the video. And just for you guys, I have a bonus video here. Uh, this one's gonna be an honorable mention. It's one that didn't fit quite in the top 10, but we still really liked it, had some crazy moments. So let's check that out now. I bought a refurbished PS5 console from Wish.com. And in this video, we're gonna see if they sent me a real PS5 console and if they actually refurbished anything. All right, so first things first, we're gonna open up this box and I honestly think it might come in the original box, the original PS5 box, because this is a, uh, a very large shipping box they sent me. Let's let's see what's inside. All right, so opening up the box. Like I said, this thing is massive. We got plenty of packaging here and we kind of have the original box. That's interesting. So they sent me the, they didn't send me the sleeve that goes around this box, but they sent me the internal box interesting let's take this out and look at it so they did indeed send me a real box there's no like i said no sleeve on here kind of just interesting coming from wish but this did indeed come from a seller on wish.com and the interesting thing is we've got a sticker up here it says grade a fully functional so i guess it's in nice condition let's go ahead and open it up and see if that's true we do still have this little box wow all right we got some packaging oh we got a black control oh no it's not never mind <laughs> i thought i had a black full black controller never mind it's the white and black that thing has that even been used what in the world interesting to see we've got our cables here we've got an hdmi cable power cable and then we should also have a stand in here we've got oh that's the charging cord we also have our manual this should be the uh stand so here's our stand we'll take a look at that in a second so far very surprised we have all the original <laughs> original components and down in here we have the ps5 and it's wrapped up in some bubble wrap I can't remember if that came with the PS5 originally. I don't think it did. Let me know down below if you remember. But let's go ahead and take this out. All right, so PS5 console pulled out. We do have the original like uh, foam inserts, I guess you'd call them, to hold them in place. I can't remember if these are the original, like this is the original wrap around it. I'm not quite sure. Um, but like first look at this PS5, it looks very nice. You have some, you have a mark there. So that does appear That's probably the mark from the stand. So I'm guessing it has been used before, which would make sense considering it is a refurbished console. So they probably fixed something on it. Now, just looking at the, uh, the center part, uh, doesn't look too bad. You got some scratches, some scuffs there, as you can kind of see hard to tell. It is pretty dusty and it smells kind of odd. Like, I don't, I don't know what it smells like. It doesn't quite smell like cigarette smoke, but it smells off that's my first like first glance like going through this everything looks perfect but then the smell it's just it's a little bit off so um yeah not sure what's going on there we'll we'll take a closer look of course but here on the top looks pretty good as well i know it's kind of hard to show for whatever reason it's it's hard to show scuffs and scratches on the ps5 i think because it's a, a matte white so it's just kind of hard to show all the standard ports nothing too bad uh, again it does smell a little bit off and yeah coming from wish i don't know if anything has actually been refurbished like i don't know if they fixed something i don't know if they cleaned out the inside i don't know but we're gonna find out all right ps5 to the side let's take a look at the stand i'm curious if they included the uh, the screw that comes with it and did they let's see let's see they oh they did wow and it's one of the newer screws nice i'm always surprised when i see that screw i figured that's the first thing to get left out of refurbished consoles or used consoles whatever all right so here's the controller and like i said this thing looks 
honestly pristine. Like, I don't think it's ever been used. I don't see really any scratches or scuffs on the front. The back looks really nice as well. I see a few small scratches, but usually if this thing is really worn, it'll it'll have some like wear marks around where your where your fingers are placed. But this one does not appear to have those. This one looks I don't I don't know if it's ever been used. And then these these wires here are weird. Like I don't know if these have been used. Like looking at them, they I don't I don't think that's the original wrapping. Like I think it would look better if it came from factory that way. And I'm not sure that these are the same zip ties that PlayStation uses. Not that it really matters. I'm just kind of curious if this is all brand new stuff or is, if it's actually been used. And you know, the thing with Wish is you never know what you're getting. The, the listings are terrible, very suspicious and weird. Let me show you that listing now and then we'll get into the uh, testing the console. So here's the listing I bought from on Wish.com and you can see it says refurbished PS5. Now coming down here to the description, very generic. It says this item is refurbished and then no other info. Just like the generic stuff like DLC is not included. Uh, so the PS5 has an SSD, all that crap you already know. So very mysterious, very weird, never know what to expect from, from Wish.com. The console is now plugged in. I got it turned on. It looks like it's working, uh, but I will revise my statement from earlier. This thing reeks of cigarette smoke. Um, I could only smell it slightly before, but now that the fans are blowing out, my whole room starts to smell like it. I don't know how I keep getting these cigarette smoke consoles. This is the second refurbished PS5 that I've bought that smelled like cigarette smokes. Dude, look at that. Oh my gosh. What, what did they refurbish? They didn't, oh my, what in the world? Does a furbish not mean clean? What are the chances? But let's go ahead and plug this controller in and uh, make sure we can connect up. All right guys, so I got a PS4 game to try. I don't actually have a PS5 game with me. Well, a PS4 will suffice. And this console is getting worse and worse by the second. The cigarette smell is just going everywhere now. My nose is getting clogged up. But man, this has gone downhill really quickly. Uh, I thought it was looking good at first, but the, the smell of the cigarette smoke, I can't imagine the inside of this thing looks good. It's gonna be a, a flashback of the, the GameStop console. I just, I'm just convinced of it. So uh, let's let this thing update. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going. No, no way. Oh. <laughs> this can't be real. I just turned this console back on and it says this PS5 services access is permanently or temporarily sus <sighs> I didn't even try to buy a bad PS5. I bought the only PS5 I could find on Wish. It was refurbished, smells like smoke, it's banned, I can't log in. What? Wow, I, I'm glad I opened this up within the 30 day window because otherwise I would have been toast. Let me see if the if it even, even loads a game. We got Persona 5 in here. We'll see if it loads up. <laughs> I, I am, my mind is blown right now. Holy crap. Like clearly, oh yeah, I forgot. I can't connect to the network. Wow. I can't even connect, I can't even test the controller because I can't download a game I want to play. I, I was going to download the, uh, um, the Astro Bot game or one of those Astro games. The, what, I can never remember the exact name of it, but you know the game where it's, where you can use all the controls easily and test out the adaptive triggers, the, all that good stuff. I can't test that out because I can't connect to the network. This is this is insane. I actually cannot believe that I got a call to this band. The chances of that, wow, like <laughs> that is bad. I don't even know if the the vibration works in this controller because I have I have not felt it yet. I guess I'll play enough to, to test it out. Oh, okay, vibration works. Wow, it just took forever to get vibration here. Oh wait, does it? It almost feels like the vibration is stronger on the left side. I don't know. It works, but. Uh, <laughs> I'm still just amazed like that the fact that this thing is banned, like it, it connected to the internet and then it was like, oh wait, sorry, you're banned. So uh, first of all, it smells like cigarette smoke, uh, it's banned, controller seems to work, I can't test a PS5 game because I can't download a PS5 game. I, I guess the next thing to do is open it up and see how dirty it is inside because I, I can't imagine, if they didn't even turn it on and, and test if it connects to the network, I can't imagine they opened it up and cleaned anything. So man, this is, uh, this is mind blowing. I can't believe how many companies are selling refurbished consoles that have issues aren't refurbished don't work just just mind-blowing but let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what it looks like on the inside all right so we're gonna open this console up now and like i said it's getting worse by the second it just it smells awful and uh we noticed on the bottom this is interesting the uh, the manufacturing date is august 22nd or excuse me august 2022 i don't know if you can see that there but it, it is so that's like six months ago so this guy whoever got it got this console they they got it banned. They got it to smell like cigarette smoke all in that matter of time. Got it to Wish, then Wish sold it. So weird. But let's go ahead and take these face plates off and see what it looks like on the inside. Um, first glance here looks pretty clean. And uh, yeah, my guess is that somebody maybe 
opened this up or probably took the face plates off blew it out and didn't open it further than here because now looking at it i can see this sticker right here looks fully intact and so does this one you got to take those stickers off to get to get below here but we're going to keep going uh, just taking a closer look at that fan like the fan doesn't really look dirty but we're going to keep going until we get down to the board and see what this thing actually looks like all right so start by taking off this little play right here and this is where you can put an ssd for your ps5 which i highly rec recommend if you have a ps5 and uh yeah it looks like that's never been used and actually i didn't really show you but the face plates themselves look really nice so like it, it's amazing that this console looks this good but smells so bad i guess it just sat in somebody's house that was smoking i don't know man just uh crazy stuff all right guys yeah, so i'm taking off this sticker here definitely never been removed before so this console has never been opened before don't know how you can call it refurbished if it hasn't been opened up and cleaned out but <laughs> apparently that's every what everybody's doing these days so uh, let's keep going though all right so i have the fan out and the fan looks suspiciously good like i don't see any dust or anything on this this fan which is amazing considering how bad this console smells i don't even know how that's possible um like i said i think they blew it out really really good from the outside somehow uh, they must have some kind of like industrial vacuum and, and compressed air i don't know but it's uh so far surprisingly clean all right first plate is now coming off we're gonna see what the inside looks like a little bit Ooh, we got some cables still strapped down there hold on a second all right so actually i'm gonna take this piece off first and again surprisingly clean in here so far i don't know how but it is uh, we're of course gonna keep going though i want to keep going until i find some some dust and dirt i don't know how it could be possibly this clean and smell this bad now's the fun part i get to take out about 40 screws and uh we'll get down to the board now all right so i actually did not need to take out all of these silver screws i don't think but i got enough screws out to flip it around and look at this heat sink and man that just looks it looks suspiciously clean like look at that i don't see any dust or dirt uh i don't know man man i, I mean you can see clearly there's some heat uh, so it's been it's been in use so much we know because it's been banned uh, but like i guess i don't know what was refurbished here i don't know what wish did with his ps5 i don't know why it was called refurbished nothing about this was refurbished i mean it wasn't even opened up and we know that because i took the warranty seal off like the warranty seal was still intact when i opened it up so yeah this console is weird like it's it's clearly the worst buy i've had in a while uh one out of ten doesn't work not refurbished i can't connect to the internet because it's banned like just a really really bad buy from from wish just a, a terrible terrible buy how many times am i going to say that but it's just it, it is and uh yeah let me know down below what you guys think about it Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.